evening everyone welcome to the stream i'm a little a little bit behind i uh i made the mistake of asking what my nieces wanted for christmas and they grabbed their top list and started showing me all kinds of things <laughs> so i had to clear them out as well as the cat ao one i will say it's really weird having the camera like on this side as you can like see the freaking cheese block. I don't like how it feels on this side of the screen. I don't know why that makes such a difference, because half of the screen is cut off in that direction normally. I sure hope I, I did. I said, I sure hope I unmuted myself, or I'm talking to nothing, because no one can hear me. You can kind of see here upon Ricky. He's just not one I'm sitting straight away. Okay. Look. Well, there's no one here to give me some feedback at the moment. Of how it sounds. I guess to be fair, I did say about two hours, so. Why do I feel like everything updated why I wasn't looking? Make sure this is muted. Why is that so expensive? Lakos are super expensive. I don't understand how kids can afford these things anymore, like when they cost as much as they do. Toys are just like, like outrageously insane. Okay, so there we go. Resolve. I forget that the second game is called Resolve as well. Memories of the Clouded Kokoro. I didn't even actually watch the cutscene. I did post, but also didn't post out that. things where I feel like I don't know if I feel like I should wait until people come in because it's gonna be the beginning of the case it's gonna be cutscene heavy I don't know How can a freaking Lego cube cost over $50? This, this, these prices are insane. I 
some of these sets are like a hundred dollars man I don't get it I miss the days when my nieces were uh, easy enough that I could just kind of buy whatever I wanted for them and it wasn't really super difficult now they're like getting to the age where they have pre actual preferences. Much longer is going to feel really weird to keep waiting, especially for people in post. I will give it till in even 15 minutes, and then we're just going to go ahead and start. I don't want to keep people waiting any longer, especially even if it's people in post. <laughs> Those of you who may or may not be watching on YouTube, I don't really know if people still watch my stream VODs on YouTube. I know there's like a niche of people who like to have VODs of streams going on in the background of people they like. I don't even know if I'm in that category of people that people like to play or binge in the background or whatnot. I have no clue. But I still make them. I still put them up. I don't even know if making these sorts of things in episode formats is even worth the trouble. I've been going for almost a year editing and re-uploading Octopath Traveler VODs, and it's just like as stream episodes, and I'm like, I don't know if people even like to watch that stuff, so I don't know if I'm over here out here wasting my time and energy on it, so and I could be doing something new. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's a fool's errand. I honestly thought it didn't really take that much time, but it's just been difficult sticking to it, I guess. But anyway, uh, enough about that. I guess I, I'm going to hold myself to what I said. We're going to start. It feels weird to start with an empty chat, but we'll, we'll deal, I guess. <laughs> That's what VODs are for, right? <laughs> Let's go. Because there are still people watching. I don't want to disrespect the, uh, anyone here anyway. The Memoirs of the Clouded Co Kokoro. Kokoro. Again? I'm confused. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> my name is Ryo Nosuke Narahado. I'm a fledgling lawyer, just a lawyer, just starting out on my journey. Six months ago, I arrived as a visiting student of law, having made the long voyage across the sea from the Japan, the Empire of Japan, to here, London, England. And on and on the way, in quite extraordinary circumstances, I made the acquaintance of a world famous detective. Currently, I reside in the attic of the detective's own lodgings, from where I run my legal consultancy of sorts. I have successfully defended a number of clients in Britain's highest court, the Old Bailey. 
but since a particularly grueling and unforgettable legal battle four months ago now, I haven't returned to the courtroom. In truth, I lost my right to return. Wait, what? But that epic trial was just one small part of an epic tale. A tale which was about to awaken from slumber. Thanks to a letter that arrived this morning from my homeland. Oh my god. Hmm. What a delicious smell wafting up the stairs. Must be nearly time for breakfast. I'd better go down to Mr. Sholm's suite and say good morning to the great detective and his and his flatmate. Okay, so yeah, we're just spirited away. 30th of August, 7.28 a.m. Sholm's is sweet. Ah, Runo, good. I was just about to call you up, call up to you. The bacon's ready. Big. Good morning, Iris. Smells delicious as usual. Before we eat, though, I have some news. I had a surprise this morning. Uh, shush! Not another word, Mr. Hanarahado. This could be just the abstruse thing for my pre-breakfast stagnation, repelling mental stimulation, my dear fellow. Morning to you too, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> ah, yes, I see. So that's it! Bro, you're so close to my face! <laughs> Bro, what hair? The truth is clear to me as day. The f my faculties of observation have revealed it again. Have revealed it again. But what are you talking about? You, Mr. Narahado, you have this very morning met with a surprise. Well, is that not the case? Um, really, my dear fellow, it barely warrants explanation. Firstly, your hair is particularly unkempt, somewhat reminiscent of a bird's nest. <laughs> Secondly, you have neglected to fasten the third button of your jacket. Clearly, when consider considered together, these two facts point to you having been flustered this morning. Can I talk now? <laughs> but of course, of course! Though I don't look for admiration, you understand? My hair always looks like this. It's been this way since I first met you. Oh, it has? And the button was ripped off last night, if you remember. By you. Hurley pulled your button off? Ah, yes, I recall the incident now. It was after supper, was it not? The evening, as the evening advanced, I picked up my violin and began to play the wailing notes of a haunting tune. But then, to my utter dismay, the third, the third string snapped. Why did it have to happen? Why? Little wonder then that in my vexation I grabbed the first button I saw and ripped it from its proper place. Well, I'd like it back now, please. It's troubling me that I can't fasten my jacket. And it's troubling me that you expect me to know where it is! Somewhere thereabouts on the floor, one presumes? Bro. Helpful! What matters is that, is that, is that the present time, Major Fellow, is simply whether or not my detection was unerring. But Hurley, Runo said when he came in, said it when he came in, didn't he? I had a surprise this morning. <laughs> well, that really is a surprise. He just was not paying attention. Yes, this man is the pride of the British Empire. The famous consulting de detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. There can't be a single person in the world who doesn't know his name. All right, then. Enough of this silly conversation. Come and eat this bacon before it gets cold. I have a new herbal tea for you to try, too. My latest special blend. And here we have Iris Wilson, Mr. Sholmes' lodger and companion. A truly exceptional young girl who is the author of a highly successful serial serialization here in London. Yes, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, as published in Randest Magazine. Minor recap for you. So, Mr. Narahado, won't you put us out of your, our misery? What, surpri what surprised you this fine morning? Ah, well, I received a letter from Japan. Oh, from Susie, you mean? Was it? Really? That's right. And she had some rather startling news, in fact. Ah, intriguing indeed. <laughs> you must tell us all about it over breakfast. Oh, yes. What fun. <laughs> Alright, Miss Sasato's letter. This is the letter that arrived from Japan this morning, by International Post. 
Oh, how lovely. Look at Susie's beautiful handwriting. Or beautiful writing, because I, I wish I could read it. <laughs> oh, right, it's in Japanese. But, it, but, but the picture's freaking in English. It's English cursive. And how was your judicial assistant faring, I may ask? She's very well, thank you. In fact, according to what she's written, she actually appeared as a lawyer in the, at the Japanese Supreme Court and won a case. <gasps> really? Oh, isn't she wonderful? Uh, cut above your good self, my dear fellow. <laughs> Bro, she's doing more work than he is. I have one case too, you know. <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Natsume appeared in the trial as a witness. Natsume, Natsume. No, I don't recall that name. Of course you do. We helped the man. Twice. You know, in those two cases that took place on Briar Road six months ago. Ah, the mustached twitchy man with the somewhat f feline eyes and the mustache. He said mustache twice. He didn't have two mustaches, hurriedly. <laughs> yes, who could forget those two cases? They made a very deep impression on me. <laughs> Although I must confess, the details are a little hazy now. A very deep impression they made on you. Clearly. There was the news. So, what was this startling news penned by Miss Sussato? Do you remember the case of the haunted lodgings, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, yes, it's very interesting, you know. I don't feel entirely uncertain that a case of that nature did not... NOT occur! <laughs> He's totally forgotten, then. Anyway, in our letter, Miss Sussato asked that we read over her case notes again and investigate further. Though it, though it took place half a year ago, for what purpose? Because of something that Mr. Natsume said to her, apparently. He suggested that the real reason why she was called back to Japan so suddenly might have something to do with that case of the haunted lodgings. Oh. On Mr. Natsume's return to Japan, Mrs. Sato's father questioned him about the case, she says. And something Mr. Natsume said appeared to trouble Professor Makatoba, prompting him to send that telegram. Oh, that case, yes! It was very strange, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> And I had compiled the whole story into a nice, neat manuscript ready for publication, too. But then Hurley here was all funny about it, remember? He was very mean. That story must not be published, you said? Very mysteriously as well. Really? I said that. Are you sure? Do you perhaps know something about it as well, Mr. Sholmes? About why Miss Sasato was suddenly told four months ago that she had to return to Japan? What well, you got to say, Mr. Sherlock? Or Herlock? It's been four months now since we waved Susie off at Dover. It was such a shock, wasn't it? The way she just suddenly announced that she had to go back to Japan. Indeed it was, due to a telegram she received from her homeland, I believe. That's right, telling her to return urgently. Yes, because her father had passed away. No, 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 no! It just said he was suffering from a high fever. The cause of which was unknown. He's not dead. We're going this letter... That news about her father's fever was just a ruse. A ruse? So Susie's daddy lied to her so that she'd make the voyage back home? Why would he do that? I have to admit, I have absolutely no idea. But she believes it's almost certainly related to the case of the haunted lodgings. Then we gotta investigate. Summoning her back to Japan so suddenly like that. I wonder what Miss Sasato's father is hiding. Hmm... Hurley, do you know what it's all about? He's gonna look. Whoa, he's all suited up! He's ready to go! Hmm? Ah, well, who can say? What? But, but you said... Please, I have engagements, my dear fellow. My calendar is quite surprisingly full today. That sounds like someone trying to dodge. The stringent analysis of the matter would be excessive, I feel. Even if I were quite... Even if I were quite at leisure. So, a man... Man the fort in my absence, won't you, Iris? I will, Hurley, don't worry. See you later. Dude, what a fancy little bow he does as he fades out of existence. He scuttled off rather quickly there. Alright, Iris, I guess you're my new assistant. I think perhaps Professor Mikotoba isn't the only person hiding something here. Sosuke-san was involved in two cases, but only one of them was forbidden from being published. By, of all people, Mr. Sholmes. Aha! I found them at last! Iris, are are they... 
the notes about the case? That's right. Susie and I compiled them together. The case of the haunted lodgings. Do you want to read them, Reno? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Iris. <laughs> I have no idea what secrets could still be hiding in the shadows of this case. But perhaps if I read over the notes again, something might come to light. This is some nice music. This is new, I think. That's the spirit! She's got a gun again! And so, Iris and I decided to read over the case notes again together. Everything from what happened, to our investigation, and that fierce battle in court that followed. Relieve, reliving every detail. I just need to find a clue. And I have all of the time in the world. Because, of course, I'm no longer allowed to practice law in the courts of Great Britain. Why?! Is that why we've done nothing for four months? Bro, I thought we were just lazy. What happened? It was six months ago, a mysterious incident that unfolded on the winery streets, wintry streets of London. Yo, the, the, the young woman was found lying on the snowy pavement of Briar Road with a knife at her back. Fortunately, her life was spared, but she was unconscious for several days following the incident. Oh, I forgot. I forgot that she actually lived. The fog was thick, and nobody saw her attacker, but by a cruel twist of fate, a visiting Japanese student was walking behind her at the time and was duly arrested. Yeah. Mr. Natsume Soseki. With Mary Olive Green. <laughs> Hello, Izzy. How are you doing today? That man was Soseki-san. The man who effected his arrest was Mr. Sholmes. Believing in our compatriots' innocence, Sasato-san and I decided to represent Soseki-san in court. And, after a grueling trial of many twists and turns, we finally managed to prove his innocence. Was that the final case, or the one before? Joy joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Was the man's reaction after the trial. But his jubilant jubilation was short-lived. Bro, I definitely need a refresher of the last game. We see a telegram from Mr. Sholmes the following morning. The victim of the Briar Road stabbing has regained consciousness. Hurry to Bart's at once. Wait, I don't remember this. Do I? So there's how I summoned a hansom and headed immediately to the hospital. <laughs> I just, I needed a refresher of the previous game. That's a rat! I haven't played the the first half of this game about in about a year, so I'm kind of just uh, vaguely remembering the details of the game. <laughs> the Saint Bartholomew Hospital Recovery Ward. This was really like four or six months ago. There you are, at last. Are we in the? Pa I think we're in a memory. Good morning, Mr. Sholmes. Is this after Sasato left? I think not. Oh no, I guess not. Oh. I'm so confused. You're late! What on earth took you so long? Your telegram only arrived at 5 o'clock, Mr. Sholmes, and it's a 20-minute ride to the hospital. That's right, and it's half past 5 now. I think we made very good time. Time is utterly irrelevant. The fact is, I have been waiting for what has felt like an eternity. Uh... <laughs> End point of fact, my myself was awoken at 4 this morning by the telegram boy. So this case is a few days after 1-4 is a flashback. Gotcha, okay. Cause I'm trying to remember what everything happened. Uh, okay, so the whole first case is a flashback. Okay, interesting. Okay. Because I want to say I don't remember things very... I don't remember... Who was the victim in the case 5? I don't remember what we investigated in that case. Bro, the whole first game was a trip. It's just hard to remember everything. Because the first case was the one in Japan, the introduction case. The second case wasn't didn't even have a court. It was just on the, the t cruise ship the whole time, which was kind of an almost an ace attorney investigation type of feeling case, which is pretty good. Then it was... Um, oh, it was the thief. The thief girl was the victim in the final case. Or, well, was the client in the final case. And then there was the one about the haunted lodgings, I guess. Or something. And then... Wait, so did I not play two cases with uh, Suzuki? And this is the second case, technically? Because I was really confused. 
I forgot the last one. Oh yeah. So the, the the other one was that dude in the top hat that we sort of convicted is guilty. I don't really know. Like it was a weird kind of thing. Anyway, sorry for that mini recap. I just had to refresh myself uh, there. So I'm like, okay. So I was like, I, the game was gaslighting me in a way. There was never a second case with Sozeki. It's here. <laughs> Can I ever say, wait a minute? Okay. And point of fact, I myself was awoken at four this morning by the telegram boy. And feeling it was somewhat unjust that I, I alone had been roused at such an hour, I sent one to you. Well, thanks for that. Anyway, you're here now, so the victim is over there. She's only just forgetting consciousness. Her hair is... You should introduce yourselves, and I shall observe from here. Why? So that's the lady who was found on the snow-covered pavement with the knife at her back. Her name is... Ah, oh, yes, here we are. Miss Green. <laughs> well, she is green. Just looking at the thing. Is this a... Why is... It's a rounded wooden figure. Isn't the most charming, is it? I don't think that's a decoration, Mr. Narahado. It's an artist's mannequin, I believe. Used when practicing sketching the human form in different poses. Holy crap, hold on. What is what is this? So, was Pop Wonderbanks? They visited Pond Brokery and Millbox Violin. Okay. The Skull Kids, bro. <laughs> bro, I love doing that. Okay, no, I remember it now. So, I was, so I was going to say, because, man, in the last stream with the introduction case, I was so confused about the fact that, like, I didn't remember uh, Nasume uh, Sozeki being involved in two cases. That's why, I'm, like, I was, I was like, couldn't remember. That's what made me forget the fifth case because of that. But I'm like, I remember the music box bit. I remembered I forgot so much about it I definitely should have maybe refreshed myself but I also assumed the game would kind of refresh me and the game has done something of that anyway really it's not exactly what you'd call a typical figure for that purpose though is it no I suppose not I confess I've never seen one quite so full figured before the Japanese don't understand <laughs> well if you want to draw a full figured person it's the right tool for the job a full Bro, the, I, I was suspecting her to ridicule him, but no, no, she just kind of went along. Look, there's a photograph in this frame. Who is it? Who is that? Who are you? Oh, yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. He looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. Perhaps the young woman's special someone, do you think? <laughs> my, my, Mr. Narahato, I didn't know you had a sense for matters of the heart. Oh, my God. Not in the least. I sincerely said the first thing I thought of. <laughs> well, that's why it explains why he's so dim on this situation. Uh, this looks like the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Do not feed! <laughs> Treat her better than bowl cut. You two is looking at <laughs> Damn, just roast him. <laughs> what is this place? A zoo? You know, I seem to remember seeing an almost identical sign in our local park. For the pigeons, yes. This is a person. <laughs> I'm glad we get to see more Sasato, though, because, man, being the last case from her perspective, it was, like, it was fun, but, like, I missed seeing her. <laughs> Poor woman, I hope she hasn't read this. Holy sh- A rat! A mouse, Mr. Naruhato! An enormous mouse! Vermin in a hospital? That doesn't seem be the best. But it looks like a very healthy specimen, doesn't it? It's very plump. <laughs> I'm not sure we can say that's down to the excellence of the facility, if that's what you were thinking. Bro, I've missed her. She's so funny. That's a big old bag. That must be a bag of Miss Green's personal belongings. She would have been brought directly here after she was found stabbed in the pavement, though. I expect a friend or a family member probably brought some things for her. Alright, then. Let's see what's inside. A change of clothes, though, now. And don't... No, Mr. Narahara, you mustn't... You, you must never scrutinize a young maiden's personal belongings. 
But the young maiden might have a, had chocolates or biscuits or caramel. <laughs> Bro, are you hungry? Okay, I can't look around. I look... Uh, this looks like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. <laughs> the patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so they're probably running around the hospital. He or she is probably running around the hospital. Bro, why am I in the same wavelength of Ace Attorney protagonists all the time? Maybe that's why I like these games so much. Oh dear. How very worrying. There's no very in there. Whoops. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. Uh, oh, these look suspicious. There are all sorts of medicines in this cabinet. Look. I'm not sure it's safe leading them in reach of everyone's like this. I was thinking the same thing. Yes, you're right. I can imagine if you were peckish, you might try a whole bottle or two. <laughs> Sasato, what? Well, at least there seems to be a little lock to secure the cabinet doors. I don't imagine that would stop you if you were hungry. I heard you break the lock. <laughs> hunger doesn't turn me into a criminal, you know, Masasato. Bro, why are we all hungry? <laughs> I don't remember her being so goofy. All she's done so far is sit over there. Okay, let's actually talk to her. Um, good morning. Oh, God. Did she leave? Oh, no, she just came over here. Hello, um, I am Rinosuke Naruhado. I'm uh, from the Empire of Japan. Oh, no! Was, was it your knife that... Are you the man who... No, 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 I'm a lawyer. <laughs> so cute. I can't even see what that little icon is. It's so small. And I'm Sasato Mikotoba. Pleased to meet you. Oh no! Was was it your knife then? Are you the one? No, no, no! I assure you, I'm Mr. Naruhado, judicial assistant. We heard that you regained consciousness and wanted to come, give you our best wishes. Best wishes for me? Um, thank you. I'm Olive, Olive Green. <laughs> now I'm hungry for Olive Garden. <laughs> Twitch didn't like the heart emojis. Dang. Okay. I'm an artist. Well, no, that's not right. Is it? What I mean is, I'm trying to be an artist. Well, what I really mean is, I desperately want to be an artist. But the truth is, I don't have any talent. I know I don't. That sucks. I know that feeling. It's no wonder I was stabbed in the back. <laughs> I don't think that's related, actually. <laughs> Gosh, this young woman seems to bend over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened from her perspective, I suppose. She wasn't watching! How could she have a perspective? Okay, about the incident then, sure. Suddenly be struck in the back by a blade as you were walking along the pavement. What a terrible experience you had, Miss Green. She's got a key. It was so cold that day, and the fog was so thick, I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you've been comatose all that time. But the case has been solved, hasn't it? Well, I've been here in the hospital, I mean. Indeed it has, my dear madam! Spectacularly by none other than I, Herlock Sholmes! Bro, I forgot he was here! He's like, he sits in the background, nice and quietly, and then the moment you let your guard down, wham! He just re-announces himself. It's like he has an ear for only ways to make himself look good. Mr. Sholmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Naruhardo's hard work in court that solved that case. Bro, wait, what's happening? Sasato is, is not praising Herlock Sholmes for once? That's completely out of character. I feel like I'm in a fever dream. But then again, she knows the fact. Are you... You have to hear about what happened, Miss Green. Yes, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police force is supposed to be coming to fill me in shortly. Oh, I see. He came around, seems to have made everyone frantically busy. 
I'm so sorry, I should have ever gained consciousness. It was selfish of me! This poor woman! Oh no! We're all so relieved that you're on the mend, Miss Green. Really, we are. With that kind of attitude, <laughs> maybe her name should be blue, not green! <laughs> Bro, I can't even. Oh god. So, you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? Oh no! Uh, oh, I couldn't possibly claim that. I'm a fledgling artist at best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really. At the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh my, an Academy of Fine Arts. Great Britain is such a wonderful country. Tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Oh no, actually, I don't deserve it, but I have a little flat on Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Oh no, is it? Wait, wait, what? Drink will just spark grape juice in her and make her soup. <laughs> Bro, you have fallen hard. Brixton is some ten stops away on the underground from here. And Thorn Academy is a mere three minute walk from Brixton Town Center. I was like, does that matter, Mr. Sholmes? Perhaps not, but Briar Road is far less sad or Bro, I can't. I'm, not, I'm convinced he's making up words. Sa salubrious part of town by comparison, dwelt in by those of inferior means, including the maleficent Mr. Mustache. Inferior means, I suppose, so Scotty Sanders fit the bill. <laughs> you struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary for a young fine art student to be walking in such a district. That's all. D Dude, Sholmes always remembers things on a literal case by case basis. It just comes back into his head in and out weirdly. What's this? She suddenly clammed up. Mr. Sholmes, you should be ashamed of yourself prying into a young maiden's private affairs. <laughs> oh dear me, do forgive me. Bro, um, if you don't mind, I'm being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. Oh yes, of course, we won't keep you. Thank you so much, Miss Green. Okay. Is there Mr. Narrow Fodder here? Mr. Narrow Fodder! Damn, I act as if the characters here with the actually great <laughs> Dude. So, is that a breeze? I, I have. I, 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 oh, the word. Gotcha. Oh boy. <laughs> Dude, I don't even remember who Ashley Graydon looked like. But that is that is a high level of simping, okay. <laughs> and I thought my and I thought my my, my uh my attraction Sasato was bad. <laughs> Narrow fodder now. Well, um, if you're looking for Narahato, the lawyer, that's me, but Ah, Mr. Narrowfodder, good. This is for you. This is from Miss, Mr. Saucy Nutmeg. <laughs> who? Mr. Natsume sent a message to me? I love how he got Natsume out of that because I was lost. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Hold on. What the heck is an auto mod? I didn't know I had one of those. I, I wouldn't go so far as saying it as, as simping. Okay. Um. <laughs> the comment is funny, but uh, just in case, I am going to just deny it, I guess. Just because... Wait, what? They don't like it. Why <laughs> did I say it? Gonna deny that. No, wait, what? <laughs> wait, <laughs> that's one word, bro. I didn't. I I did not. Okay, I added it to a blocked term. Okay, well, whoops. 
I didn't even know I could do that. I just wasn't gonna. Allow, there wasn't. I should just let it alone. Whatever. It lets you use the normal word fine, but like, white twink fa is too much for the bot. That's weird. I've and all the times I've been streaming on Twitch, I have never had that prompt come up before. That's hilarious. Anyway. I think I remember who you're talking about, but I just I still need a visual representation. But I'm pretty sure I know who you mean. Mr. Natsumi sent me a message to me? Let's see. But why would a policeman be delivering a message from Mr. Natsumi? Exactly. What's going on? What's a Scotland Yard constable doing playing delivery boy at this time of the morning? Ugh, what are you waiting for? Let me see that! Oh. Well, this is most unexpected. Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes? Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes, he says. Have you not seen this note? No, how could I have? It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting the great detective rest. A new case calls, a case of murder, no less. You must depart at once. Murder? Call a cab? Time is of the essence. But, but the trouble is... You've yet to read Mr. Natsumi's note. I was thinking we ought to pay him a visit in his lodgings once we did. That will be entirely convenient. Convenient? What do you mean? Oh, no. It's all here in the notes, my dear fellows. The murder we must investigate took place at Mr. Mustache's lodgings. Wait, what? I'll hail a farce. At once. Uh, I don't know how you say that. That's not farce. Whoops. Whatever. We move it on. I'm not going to sit here and let pronunciation be my downfall, as it always is. It was only yesterday that, that Sasaki-san was in court and we were dispelling doubts about his innocence. And now, the very next day, there's a murder at the man's own address. He very well be the unluckiest man alive. Or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover it was worse than we thought. Alright, well, let's go. Holy! What on earth? Oh my, the gentleman is deceased without question. He's dead! Hello <laughs> comes student, Mr. Naruhato Esquire! <laughs> Mr. That's <laughs> Dude, bro, he's still calling us that. Oh, why? Why is this happening? Why to me? I've only just got out of court! Yesterday, I was finally home after two days of misery! And then I wake up the next day to this! No early bird should catch a worm like this! Woeful worm without wiggle! Bro, this game loves him so much. I see you on high spirits again this morning, Mr. Mustache. Ah! Not the horrible hair her luck shomes! Shoo! Shove off! Show yourself to the door! I never invited you! Mr. Sholmes came here with us. I'm quite sure he'll be able to help you, Mr. Natsume. I'm entirely at your disposal, Mr. Mustache. What can I do for you? <laughs> oh, here we go. Gregson again. There they are already, the busybodies. Ha, ah, Inspector Gregson! What a pleasant surprise! Pleasant, is it? Gives me a heartburn every time I see your face at a crime scene, Sholmes. Aha! I deduce, Inspector, that your heartburn is a result of your excessive consumption of fried food. Um, good morning, Inspector. This is a crime scene! Don't go touching anything! Or good morning to you, too, Sunshine. Oh, God. Who is this? Oh, yes, it ends off! You're gonna mess up my crime scene! Oh, uh, no, I just wanted to look. That's all. No chance! I know you're kind. They'll mess it up by looking at it. Ugh, someone's in a bad mood. There's certainly some bad in here, isn't there? 
Alright, it sounds like I better talk to the inspector first and try to create some flavor. What a terrible thing to have happened. It's only been three days since I was arrested for the incident on the pavement outside. And then, having finally regained my freedom, it starts happening all over again. Endless existence of circulating experiences! So the victim lived here on the ground floor, and your room is just one story up, isn't it? That's... That doesn't look like how you spell story, but all right. Yes, that's right. In a way, we are neighbors, I suppose. So did you know the victim? Were you friends? Oh my god, he's having a seizure. What's the matter with Sosuke-san now? It was an easy enough question, wasn't it? Why does he seem so shaken by it? Well, I, I suppose he, he wasn't a complete stranger. But, but, but he never did invite me to his room. N never! In mod my honor, I swear it! Okay. What an extreme reaction. You're probably wishing you never asked now, aren't you, Mr. Narahato? We found him here. I felt wretched, which is why I sent word asking you to come. Throw that, that inspector over there! Through that inspector over there! This guy. So, Inspector, what was the victim's name? Who was he? Mr. William Shamspear. <laughs> he was a lodger here. As you can probably tell, he was an actor. Bit of a dead loss as it happens, or just dead. Mr. Shamspear? It was the landlord, the old Mr. Garadeb, and the other lodger, Mr. Natsumi, who found him. Shamspear card away. He's dead! Fella didn't rise at his usual hour, so Garadeb got worried and kicked the door down. But, doesn't Mr. Garadeb have a bad leg? Ah, uh, yeah, you're right there. It was that jittery Japanese hunchback over there who actually did the kicking. Really? Suzuki so san Victim was pretty hard up, seems. Even done some time inside for petty crimes. He had no money, no place to go, and no friends. His only acquaintances were the people in his house. Necromancy, don't ask how. <laughs> Miserable life and a miserable end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Tatsumi still doing here? He's not involved in the investigation, so shouldn't you have sent him away from the crime scene? Well, I'm not saying it's because the fellow looks odd or anything, or that he acts suspicious. But I thought it would be prudent to take a statement from the co- I mean, co -abator. You nearly said culprit there, didn't you? Oh dear. Sinatsume appears to be under suspicion again. It certainly seems that way. He just he, just, he does just come across as such an odd fellow, doesn't he? Poor man. How unfortunate. <laughs> How unfortunate. Anyway, I can't see much till the coroner gets here. But I don't think the fellow's been a goner for that long. Body's still warm. Even the inspector would allow it. I don't think I could bring myself to touch a bed, dead body. Stupid window. Wait, why is it acted as inspected already? I must have inspected him in a Look at him over there! What are you doing? Um, Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Ha! You need only observe to know, my dear fellow. Investigating, naturally. There's nothing natural about that pose. Mr. Sholmes, have you made some miraculous discovery? <laughs> patience, my dear madam, patience. We've not been here in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to deduce is what actually happened. <laughs> God, okay! <laughs> I haven't done much except solve the whole thing! <laughs> my goodness! But isn't that everything we need to know, Mr. Sholmes? Mm. Now that you propose the idea, I believe one could indeed see it that way. <laughs> I can't with this man, bro. He's so nuts. At the present time, I have managed to draw two incontroversial conclusions. The first, that there was a physical struggle here last night in which the victim fought for his life. Ah! Ah! Bro, everyone's so close. Mr. Natsumi, what's wrong? It's something that Mr. Sholmes says is significant somehow. No, no, no. 
don't mind me. Forget I was here. And my second conclusion is that there was a poison lingering in the air here last night that passed the victim's lips. N nonsense! Huh? Dude, what are you doing? Alright, Mr. That's to me. Why are you reacting so extremely to Mr. Strom's deductions? No, 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 please. Pretend I'm not here. <laughs> Invisible, in ineffable, inscrutable, insignificant. Impossible to ignore. You must tell us everything, Mr. Sholmes. Spare no detail. But of course, let the theatrical tragedy before us unraveled by my great deductions, presented for your pleasure in two acts. We've heard some truly astounding great deductions from Mr. Sholmes in the past. No doubt this will be no exception. What miracles will unfold before our eyes this time? The sarcasm is thick. So, my dear fellows, it is for your delight and wonder that the curtain rise for Herlock Sholmes' Logic and Reasoning Spectacular, Act 1! Bro. <laughs> I'm okay. I have no nothing in terms of evidence. Okay, the cause of death. <laughs> Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this dis dis disconsolate room last. I cannot say these words. Foam with the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you will observe, one half of a sizable bar of soap. You <laughs> meaningful? Inaudibly. Wait, wait a minute. <gasps> That's a bar of- Why was he eating soap? Why is soap set so perfectly set up on the dish? Like the victim's last supper, in fact. Yes. Could be that the man was about to eat it? Of course. The fork reveals the answer. <laughs> He's looking at us like, what? So how is he holding that? He's dead! Appears that the young man's appetite was his undoing. Taking up arms in the form of his cutlery, the victim engaged in a deadly battle for his life. Yet the struggle against his hunger was in vain, for in the end he couldn't resist devouring the slippery feast. I can't even read this in the voice. He's just gonna box this out, man. But London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. The soap... And the lather about the young man's mouth are too perfectly matched to ignore. Excuse me? The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to aggressive ind ingestion of foul soap. Though personally, I have a great, greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. Excuse you? Poisoning from soap ingestion. That's not a thing. Well, maybe it is, actually. Suicide or murder? The cause of death and identified, we proceed to Act 2, where we ponder the next question. Is, was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall that the death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? The second teacup suggests the answer. To draw a conclusion on such a meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. A careful criminal would have absconded with his own cup to cover his tracks. Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. <laughs> Dude, that's... <laughs> Sumi over here is losing it. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. Like, excuse me? Though forced open now, at the time of the incident, the door was locked. This door was locked. And the sole key was in the victim's pocket. <sighs> excuse me. I don't know where that came from. In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he must have been alone. Alone with his inferior soap, from whence wafted an inferior scent. And with that acid aroma lingering in the air, the victim met at his end, in tragic solitude. He could take comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed the way to the thereafter. Ashley graded and so sexy. <laughs> it does sound kind of insane. No possible perpetrator present. Okay. 
So he's suggesting it's a suicide of eating poison, poison himself. This concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' Great Deduction. Alright. <laughs> I love the fact that she's not buying it, man. Neither is Gregson. There's just one thing, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> uh, just one? You are disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you? Senor Hano, play. Pray, what concerns you? <laughs> Could be wholesome, but it takes a ton of context and ignoring the fact that they never meet. <laughs> well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think a man would have eaten soap? It is quite apparent that this man had barely a penny to his name. It is a curious thing, but one's is but to one so destitute, soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly appetizing. How extraordinary. Sasato, don't buy this nonsense. It's just soap. It tastes gross, but I don't think it would kill you. In truth, I have tried a little soap myself in the past. You've eaten it, you mean? My dear fellow, it was some time ago now. My p postulation was that it would it was that it would cleanse my guts. And did it? And I was writhed in agony on the floor and spit the contents of my uh, spit the contents of my stomach. I guess I believe it did. The experience taught me a valuable lesson. Soap is quite poisonous. It has an unpleasant taste and leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot recommend it. <laughs> Chip with no regards for canon all with my pain. He's never me. <laughs> Believe me, I wouldn't need it, even if you did. Well, to be fair, I mean, you can't be for sure how two people would react if uh, would interact if they never get a chance to meet. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> There's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh, what's that? It's Mr. Natsume. Ah! I couldn't help noticing him shuddering... And quivering out of the corner of my eye. It was as if Mr. Sholmes' deductions touched a nerve somehow. N -n 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 nonsense He just filters. Well, that clenched teeth episode didn't last. He's... I think, judging by Mr. Natsume's reaction, Great Detective Deductions may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Sholmes' observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. He has a tendency to hit the nail on the side of the head and drive it in at an obtuse angle. <laughs> when he does that, it fails to us. It, fail, it falls to us to straighten things out. All right, then. Let's see what we can do. Her goofy little smile. I can't even. Yes, we must pick out the key words in Mr. Sholmes' quite brilliant deductions, as she says with an ellipsis. And discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. If you can do that. I'm sure we'll arrive at what Mr. Sholmes meant to say in the first place. Oh my god, you're giving him too much credit. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Once again, my dear fellows. <laughs> for your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Sholmes is logic and reasoning spectacular. Act 1. Bro. The amount of st <laughs> course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. All right, back to this one. Ah. Careful motivation. Do I need to read this whole bit again? I'm not going to read the whole thing again. <laughs> Look at this. Well, you can't deny that a fork implies man was eating something or about to eat something. <laughs> She's so daughter. <laughs> yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I would prefer to use a fork rather than attempt it with chopsticks. <laughs> and of course, only half the bar of soap is left on the plate. 
but might there not be some other explanation? Something material that proves whether or not the man really hates himself. Wait, what? Bro, it's right there. Look, there's more soap on the floor here. Sir Hamspear, Hamspear must have really loved the stuff. Let's not jump to conclusions, Mr. Narada. Look closely at the soap. You see that it would fit together perfectly with the other bar on the table. What the? How can that be? I think there are two halves of the same bar that broke apart. Well, that's I meant to hit the present, but wrong button. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course. The other piece was of course the other piece of soap reveals the answer. It, it being the other half of the soap on the table, in short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really, for no depths of hunger could be drive any man to attempt to eat soap. Look at Narahana! He's like, What are what is it what are you? Even I, with my inquisible thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. Well, that's fair. <laughs> okay, I get it. But that begs the question of, of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation is in our hotto, and one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. For London's foul soap is to be smirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. Mr. Sholmes is still pushing the soap argument then. <laughs> Perhaps he's suggesting the man licked the soap rather than ate it. If soap and linen is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there's no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food isn't the only thing that passes by people's lips, is it? Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the teacup. Indeed, cups have been a vessel of choice for practicing poisoners all over the centuries. <laughs> I I think I've done the same thing as a kid, bro. I can't remember. That was not something I was expecting to read. <laughs> sure, okay. And it would appear that this victim drank every last drop. Well, that's not even true. There's no sign of food anywhere in the room. Dude, look at his eyes dart! Which leads us to an immountable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the interest of poison contained in this teacup. Okay. Solved. The cause of death identified as we proceed to act two. We ponder the next question. Okay, so let's go ahead. Is it suicide or murder? Last. What is the soap in? Ah, the western vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's already featured heavily, heavily in our deduction so far. Yes, we can imagine that it short that shortly after before his death, Mr. Hamsphere was having, having a drink of tea. There would be nothing remarkable about that, but what troubles me? It was that to be the reaction we heard Mr. Sholmes suggest it. There's more to this deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for some more clues. Let's see. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Bruh! Ah! There's another teacup. Did the man die and die alone? This other teacup suggests the answer. Yes, there are two teacups in this room all along. Ah, in other words, this is a strong indication that the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. At the very least, we can say now with certainty. 
that somebody else was here in this room last night talking, taking tea with the victim. What are you, what are you talking about? Utterly, unbelievably, initially, unreasonable. To draw a conclusion of such a mere your evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. You mean to say you know exactly who was in this room at the time of the victim's death? Indeed. What reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. I'm not sure I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back to the Halicon days of eating too much soap. <laughs> the identity of the guest who was in here last night when the victim passed away is... It's something I have a very bad feeling about. Well, you can try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Narahado. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. What is this? I have a little information on it. It's empty. Empty of liquid, but full of air. That makes you think, doesn't it? It makes me think that you're full of hot air. We should be thinking about who else was in the room at the time. Bother. Sister Town's quip and response was cleverer than my original riddle. <laughs> Bro, I love it. Um, just look. See, the only things in this room are makeshift stage and costumes. Overlook these three books initially. I wonder what they are. Let's see. The titles read The Picture of Monsieur Loch, Canterbury Yearnings, and a meal for Gabriel. I can't read these French words. Wait, I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible coincidence, but are the exact same few books that Miss Hanatsumi purchased the other day. What? Yes, on the day of an unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed. So he said I had just been to a bookshop and bought them. That's right. And now those three titles are here in the room of the victim. Yet Miss Hanatsumi claims to have never been here before. Oh my god. What? What does this mean, do you think? I, I really don't know what to make of it. <laughs> Pile of familiar books. What is, why is a candle here? You know, Mr. Shamsher sure didn't eat candles, it seems. We've already established that he didn't eat soap either. Uh, do you think perhaps the guest brought this candle here last night? Even if he or she did, does it reveal anything about the guest's identity? Good point. There goes my idea. Snuffed out like that candle will be. You size so deeply, Mr. Harlow, you're in danger of blowing out the flame. <laughs> Bro, she just roasts him casually. Okay, well, we obviously know it's this. Wrong button! We're gonna incriminate our boy. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is a pile of familiar books. Quite so. It's only regret that these three titles are here in this room. It's the link to the truth. Ah! Miss Hatsume, you purchased these books four days ago at the second-hand bookshop. So that's just a c coincidence. In that case, you will be able to bring the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This, at this very moment? No, never, non-negotiable. You can't bring your own copies here. It proves that these three books are in fact yours. <laughs> Having purchased the books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. So you could conceivably have brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could only have brought these three books here to the victim's room. Bro, that's so good. Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial, concluded at the Old Bailey. Uh, uh -huh. In short, there is only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in his room last night as a result of poisoning. And that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor... <laughs> Bro. 
was you, Mr. Natsuki Natsumi. <laughs> what? <laughs> you say such the weird things. Thus concludes the final act of Harlock Shown's Great Deduction. Got him. But we know he didn't kill him, because he wouldn't be back in Japan if he had. But he did mention the poison thing in the in the first case of this game, and I was very confused, because I never remembered poisoning being a thing in any of the first game's things. Now it makes sense. I was real confused. He's trying to poo! Not again! Not again! Not again! Not again! Well then, that's not suit me. It would appear you're gonna have to accompany me down to the yard. Again. But, 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 but wait! Hold your horses! Yes. Door! Key! Locked! Entry! Exit! Entirely impossible! He's so flustered, he's being even stranger than normal. What? You think that's an alibi? You could have just made a copy. What? You live in the same building, after all. You could have had plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. But, 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 but... Misery me! Sorry, sir. You'll get your chance to give your side of the story later. The facts speak for themselves, Mr. Mustache. Ah, you, you, you a horrible Herlock Sholmes. He really has found himself an arch rival now, hasn't he? Come on now, no dilly-dallying. Outside, there's a carriage waiting. Local student, Mr. Marahato Esquire. I, I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but... You have to help me, please, please! I'm innocent! Alright, I understand. We'll come to your cell later and talk about it. And one more thing. Oh, uh, one more thing. Oh, yes? My, my poor little kitty cat. Please give him his breakfast for me! Oh my god, this is nuts. <laughs> And so, his evil curse still apparently unbroken, Sosuke-san so found himself once again the prime suspect in a case of murder. Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the Greek detective. My dear fellow, that honor belongs to you! True. That is our fault. Well, at least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Yes, that's right. Ah, and of course. What? Have you forgotten what the inspector mentioned before? Absolutely. It was the landlord, Mr. Gerdeb, who discovered Mr. Shamspear. Ah, Mr. John Ge John Gerdeb, yes. But we could find him in his sitting room on the top floor as usual. Right, we must remember to go and talk to him later then. All right. What's happening? It makes me weird. Oh, the poor man. So young to die. Do you suppose it was a very painful death, being poisoned as he was? I don't know. All we can do now is hope that he'll be reborn into a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder. Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? So sorry? I made sure I had a reference at the ready just, just an occasion as this, actually. This book is entitled, The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed, The British Way. I'll just reread it now. On one moment. There's quite a spine on that book, isn't there? <laughs> ah, one of the teacups that Mr. Shamsphere and his guests drank from last night. But don't go drinking from me then, Mr. Narhato. There's bitter poison inside. Her intense frown, I swear. I'm not planning on drinking any, don't worry. Anyway, the cups are both empty. That's true. So, one was Mr. Shansphere's, and the other must be the cup that Miss Natsumi was drinking from. But sozaki san wasn't poisoned, of course. Perhaps we should take these so we can examine them in more detail later. We just took them? Toxicologist, I don't know. Discolor blue discoloration? I didn't even realize he had blue discoloration. What's that? 
What's this? It looks like a part of an envelope. I think. Yes, I think you may be right. Perhaps it was torn off when the letter was opened. Is that significant? Well, I mean, it's a little out of place, perhaps, when you look around the room. There's no sign of the letter or the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there? Ah, she's right. And yet, here we have the torn off end of an envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree. We better take this, just in case. You can't just take things. Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Somehow they look out of place in this room with its grim shady goings on. This one looks like a king's attire. A king? I've already dreamt of being a king. Right, really? Oh, I think you'd be more suited to a feudal lord. A, a dynamo or such like. With a... With a con mage top knot? Every Japanese man wishes he had a con mage. Wait, what? Oh, you look wonderful with one, and you already have the sword. Can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the streets of London with a ch chan mage and a sword? <laughs> Bro, these two are something else. They feel so different from the first game. There's not much on these shelves, is there? Just this wine glass and a bottle. Both of them are cracked. Yes, not much use, are they? What's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper. That's all. Prosecutor Lord Van Zeeks. <laughs> oh God, I have to remember his voice. Chow Mein Gay. It's the haircut that Gucci had in the first game. Oh, okay. Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it was a, it's a waste and that he should donate some to the needy. <laughs> You could suggest it next time we meet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, as we've seen from the outside, the window is completely bricked up. The vestige of the former window tax that Britons had to pay. What strange things they used to tax in Great Britain. Bro, what strange things we still tax today? I mean, making people pay for the number of windows they had in a property. It's extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think of the poor having to block up their windows just to avoid an unaffordable tax. Oh, what is it, Miss Nassato? If you look closely, the number of the bricks are, are loose. Wait, really? Oh. Soap? <laughs> yes, it looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of them just here. Was it Mr. Hamster who did, I wonder? Being the lodger in this room. How oh, look at this, Mr. Narahato. On the outside, there's a little ledge. And there's something on it. What? Outside? Brr, it's so cold outside. You feel like through this gap. It did snow all last night. It would be cold. The soap addiction? But more importantly, what is on the ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? It's more bars of soap. <laughs> Soap? What are bars of soap doing laid up on a ledge outside the window? I, I have no idea. But the pair of them look rather, rather charming like that. <laughs> Still, it's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined up outside the window. I think perhaps we should take one. There are two, after all. Oh, dear. I, I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look here at the soap. Ah. Do you see the middle layer there? There's a patch that's different. It's a different color. It, it It's sort of transparent, but... It's sort of fancy design, I suppose. Oh, when you're in Britain! It's like the H Hinomaru flag of Japan, doesn't it? How wonderful. It's probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in this ramshackle old room? The bar of soap has been entered into the court record. <laughs> okay. Uh, the lockbox... And here we have another disproportionately large machine. This one looks like a meter of some kind. Ah, uh, this is a gas meter, I believe, I think. It seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use it with coins. Ah, I see. Yes, now that you pointed it out, I can see that there's a slot here. looks just like it could take a coin. My god, that's crazy. Paying for gas like in that way. So you mean if you put in a coin here? That's right. That it would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. 
So if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in a freezing in the freezing cold. Yes, or if you were a scatterbrain with no change because you forgot your exact you were ex to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. Oh, that might be it because the music stopped. Looks like you're having a good snoop around, eh? Inspector Gregson, back so soon? After I threw that little Japanese fellow in the clink, I went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes' time, this place will be condoned off by the yard. Oh, I see. Well, we'd better be leaving, then. Poor Mr. Natsume must be feeling very low back in the cell again so soon. I'm sure we should probably go and... Excuse me? He just got up? What's wrong, Mr. Naruhato? It's... <laughs> It's the revival. Ah! Wait, he's he's up? He's not dead? Out, out, beast candle. Life's but a walking shadow. The poor player. That struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. He's so, so. Now, how soundeth the next part? It's Dale, told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Indeed, oh happy day! <laughs> what, what, <laughs> dude, how did his legs do that? What, 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 what? <laughs> Walking dead! <laughs> How, how do your legs bend that way? Wait, wait, wait. Is he dead or is he alive? I'm confused. The, the fella isn't dead at all? What was that nonsense he was saying, though? Dude, she's so serious. It's Shakespeare mode. I think, yes, it was from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. A soliloquy from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare? So, no murder to... So it was that the victim, Mr. William Hamspear, came back to life. If the man had indeed been poisoned, it transpired that it hadn't killed him. He was taken by emergency carriage to a nearby hospital for treatment. And Inspector Gregson evicted us from the scene of the crime. Whatever that now was. <laughs> Nobody knows. Who's that outside? With the soap! Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. What a strange situation, Mr. Natsume. Arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Hamsphere didn't consume the poison, as we deduced. But it was an accident. Attempted suicide or attempted murder. Though the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Miss Hatsumi in custody. I suppose so. So it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Oh, what's this? You over there, the orange. I remember you from the first game passing through and had nothing to do with anything. And the Shakespeare dude. Like, he looks like he's trying to see into Soseki-san's lodgings. Wait, Soseki-san's on that floor? Wait, I thought... I thought... I'm kidding my... Exactly, yeah. Is something wrong, Mr. Narahato? Um, excuse me, can we have a word? Ah! Um. <laughs> he just ran off. After a pose. I felt sure I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Hmm. I do too, but I don't remember. I do. I'm saying, oh, what? That bike is broken. More soap. God. With the exception of the top floor where Mr. and Mrs. Garadab live, all the windows are bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on the number of windows the property had. In order to pay less tax, the poor members of society filled in many of their windows. But the tax has since been abolished, hasn't it? So the windows could be all opened up again, surely. 
Unfortunately, it would appear that the residents of this district can't afford to pay to have the work done. Yes, that is a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have to live all cooped up in the windowless room. I suppose that's the price you pay for living in very cheap accommodation. All seems rather pointless when you put it like that. Yeah, it seems kind of sad. There always seems to be a bicycle outside of the Garadev residence. I read that bicycles are extremely popular all over Great Britain at the moment, in fact. That one seems very warped, though, especially for the front wheel. Is that to make it more of a challenge to ride, do you think? No, I'm afraid that may be a result of the rider's incompetence. <laughs> for the front wheel to be so badly warped, I'm afraid the rider may have been similarly affected. Then there's a good chance Mr. Tumi has been practicing on this bicycle, I think. Oh dear, I fear you may be right. Okay. I guess I could check the door for me. The Garadim household and Mr. Natsumi's lodgings are in a prominent position here on the corner. And then I look at the building. I can't help but feeling that it's a bit of a slant. It does look as though it would collapse even the smallest in the smallest sort of quake, doesn't it? And it isn't supposed to be haunted as well? I think I might have a hunch as to why Suzuki san has, a, has such a hunch back. Oh, I see it! The whole building is kind of like a cracky. I didn't even notice until he pointed it out. What's well, over here? Lens blanketed in fog again today, and the sky is covered in a cloud. If you look carefully in the distance, you can just make out the Crystal Tower being built. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Crystal Tower, yes. It should be the Great Britain ex the Great Exhibition that's opened in six months' time. I was talking about the Great ex Exhibition of London at the moment, it seems. Well, it's to be the largest event of its kind anywhere in the world, with technology and scientists from all over. I can't wait for it myself. Do you think visiting students from the Far East like us will be granted entry? The last great exhibition that was to be held in London had more than 6 million visitors, it seems. And this time, the British are determined to make it an even bigger success to outdo the Paris Exposition. I see. That's an incredible number of people. And with so many people expected to attend, we should easily be able to slip it unnoticed. There's always the honest approach of buying tickets at the main entrance, Mr. Naruhado. <laughs> Bro, why did it gotta be sneaky? Snowman! Why does we build this snowman on some sort of pedestal, do you think? That's not a pedestal, Mr. Naruhado. That's a part of the snowman's body. Really? But it already has a perfectly good body. Well, it's true that British snowmen are usually made with two balls of snow. Perhaps this is a foreigner. <laughs> what? And now we're looking at him as if he's strange. Poor man, I know how he feels. If anything, it's Japanese and British two ball snowmen that are the strange ones, isn't it? After all, real people do have three sections. Head, torso, and legs. Do you ever think that perhaps you think about things too much? <laughs> Leave her alone! Don't talk to my wife this way. <laughs> okay, uh, is there anything else to inspect? It doesn't look like there's anything else to see. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, there is nothing left. Okay, um... I didn't need to do that. Alright, let's move somewhere. Hey, Sora, how are you? Alright, so to give you a real quick synopsis of what's going on, in the last stream we talked about how that there was a there was some secret in a case that Mr. Uh, Sos Natsumi Soseki was involved in. Um, and that's why uh, that's why Sasato was called back to Japan. So this case now is, is Mr. Naruhado and Iris going through the notes of the case that she was mentioning, which this is the case we're playing now. So basically, the second case of this game is a flashback to something that apparently happened in between cases 4 and 5 in the first game. Kind of confusing at first. I thought the game was gaslighting me at first. So that's kind of the long and short of it. And right now, Mr. Natsu uh, Mr. Suzuki was arrested as the alleged poisoning of a man. He didn't mention that in the first case. But... The guy's also not dead, so who the heck knows what's going on? You're not missing a whole lot of anything, just some setup stuff, I'm guessing. 
The victim was some fancy looking guy from the first game. The Jared Ebb's room. Here we are again. The eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. We're here because Mr. Jared is the one who discovered the incident this morning. Don't forget. Moonhead! Ah, you chaps, eh? Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation in court yesterday. It was quite a trial. As much for Mr. Jared Ebb as it was anyone, really. Come straight back here after all that business at the Bailey yesterday. Didn't expect to wake up to more Bailey nonsense this morning. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Jared Ebb. Yes, I suppose you'd like to know all about that dead loss of an actor chap in the ground floor room. Those were exactly Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Looking at him straight on is kind of weird. This morning's incident. Must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear that you discovered what had happened. He stood up. Remember how you would talk? <laughs> you very much love these games and they're British people, don't you? Ah, well, that hopeless actor chap rises at 5 o'clock in the sharp every morning without fail. But at 5.30 this morning, he still hadn't lit the gas. So I went down and knocked on his door, but no ba ba but no bolly answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking down the door? Well, I called in that rum-looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? The man could have just overslept by half an hour. That's very true, Mr. Narhado. If 30 minutes oversleeping warranted such behavior, I'd have to kick your door down every morning. <laughs> and mine, too! Oh, his ta pipe is fixed. You're insane for this game. I wish there was more of it. I heard the worst of that this game was is the fact that they tried to cram their whole story in two games when they could have used a third game, but I don't really know much about that yet. Well, you know, maybe safe and sorry and all that. Is it just me, or is he avoiding our gaze now all of a sudden? Except that it was a sorry situation indeed that you found the far side of the door. Mr. Shamspear. The victim's name is Mr. Shamspear, I believe. Is that right? Yep, yeah, William Shamspear. Took to the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word... Destitute. Destitute? Well, let's face it. The only redeeming feature that that room is the cheap rent. Anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has a bally screw roost. It's so hard to choose which category Suzuki san would fall into. <laughs> Mr. Naruhado, that's a little rude. <laughs> Bro, she can read our mind. That's what I mean. Like, we're not... Unless we're whispering, but... Why wouldn't she whisper, too? That's what I mean. I love this game where it's like the compatriots always are able to read the protagonist's mind somehow perfectly. He was doing research as well. Research into what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare! Read a few plays of an old bard myself, you know? Romeo and Hamlet and all <laughs> But that's not the play. Yes, William Shakespeare is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's known as Sao in Japanese, as you know, and many of his works have already been translated. It seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Sao, though. Someone was too heavy-handed there. There was a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsumi is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shakespeare would have had much in common. Shakespeare interpretation disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. Mr. Arahato! Really? How rude! Dude, you get the hips of, of shame. Yesterday's event. And that's what Mr. Natsumi's trial yesterday. You came straight back here, I believe, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well, now, must have been about six in the evening by the time I got home. Snow was coming down rather heavily, as I remember, and it was completely dark already. That failed actor... Actor Shap was out at the time. Oh, pardon me. 
Mr. Jared have noticed there was no light from his room or something, I suppose? Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was after 8 before Shamspear got back. And the chap was up until past 1 in the morning, I'll have you know. Suppose he met his end sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark there. Well, thank you, that was very illuminating. Is everything all right, Miss Sasato? Well, I was just thinking it's a little strange, that that's all. Mr. Jaredeb, you were up here in your room all evening, if I've understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs. Not with this blasted leg. Then, how is it that you seem to know? The precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean. Ah! Bro. That's a very good point. Can't imagine that you could hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants? Is that it? I say, I know what you're thinking, and it's bully, bully outrage. I'm ex-military, don't you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants. Why would I? Then how do you know, Mr. Jaredev? It's the gas, woman. The gas tells me everything. The, the gas? Speaking gas? The gas demon. What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, as you're probably aware, the gas is supplied to the buildings by pipes. Yes, I'd more or less work that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe in the gas, to the gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to properties via the main. Yes, I understand that too. Let me see if I can explain. Let's say I was to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. Exactly, but at the same time, the lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. What? They they dim? Why? Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for the other lamps that are connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mightn't it? Mightn't it? <laughs> yes, of course, because everything is connected to a single s s something pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. You got a jolly good point. Fact is, the gas company's pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless. Long worn out. And barely got any gas in to start with. Opposite's also true, of course. Extinguish the lamps up here and they glow brighter in the rest of the house. Ah, right. I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room, you can determine what's happening elsewhere. You got it. Oh, of course. Because when people come back home in the evening and before they go to sleep at night... What they're guaranteed to do is either light it or put it out their lamps and fires. Clever. In point of fact, the room on the ground floor is the one above it, and, and they use slightly different amounts of gas. By watching the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. But why would you need to do that? Gosh, that's fascinating, Mr. Jaredev. Absolutely fascinating. Oh, well, nothing to it, really. I can't really see that's going to help us with the case, either. What I'd like to know is why Mr. Jared is so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to go to the prison and speak with Mr. Natsumi again. Good idea. What's the maid outfit doing over there? Alright, see, we're out of here, man. Peace. I like the little description of everything on the side. Alright, let's head to the prison. Oh, Mr. Natsume. You just really can't catch a break. Oh, look, Mr. Narahato. <laughs> He's back in. Mr. Natsume, have the police finished questioning you now? Look, I'm a student, Mr. Narahato Esquire! Oh, yes? What is he? Tell me! Is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? Let me guess, you're talking about Mr. Sholmes? 
He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Nesumi. Not a ghost. But but his diabolic deductions, they're not of this world. They've 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 left me. They've ah, cursed! I'm cursed, I tell you. Well, that sort of hurts. Credit to where credit is due, Mr. Narahada. You were heavily involved in the deduction too. Yes, I'm moving on. We have some wonderful news. Oh? The victim that we all thought, thought was dead has come back to life again. <laughs> now, in the absolutely worst case, you could only be tried for attempted murder. That's great, isn't it? Listen up to me. It's terrible! Oh. I'm stuck in the cell, suffering for some silly wrong end of the stick! You did, didn't you? Confess, you're a killer! Why the mustache? <laughs> Why the mustache? Constant questions! I'm so sorry to hear that. Ugh, that selfish shyster! Make up your mind. Are you dead or alive? If you were going to come back to life, why bother dying? Fair. Wickedly wishy washy William! Well, it seems like the Mr. Shamespear was never actually dead in the first place. Oh, yes. That might make sense. Yeah, I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. Our lively debate last night was much fun. Besides, I think it was our last. Oh! Oops. <laughs> Oops! Um, Mr. Natsume, does this mean that you did see the victim last night? You met with Mr. Shamspear, didn't you? I'm gonna say another word. We might have a lower present. I hate him. Who do you think I am? Please, Mr. Natsumi, we need to hear your side of the story. Ugh, why am I cursed like this? What the heck? You know exactly what happened last night, then? Mr. Natsumi? I need to tell! But, Mr. Naruhado Esquire, I'm eternally grateful for you helping me with that accursed case yesterday. I guess it's all more Miss Green hospitalized after she ended up with a knife on her back. I remember that was only yesterday. I know, it felt like over a year ago. Once the trial was over, I trust, trudged my weary way back to my lowly lodgings. And that evening at past nine, I must have been, I visited Mr. Shamspear. So, you did go to the victim's room then. As we feared. I didn't do anything wrong! I've never been to his room before! It was the first time! Then what made you decide to go? I bumped into him when I arrived back at the house. We got chatting and it developed into a discussion. We had to go out, so I bade him farewell. That ties in with what Mr. Jerry Dem said. Then went out and came back after 8. We meet again later that evening at around 9 or just after. When I took him some nice tea I brewed as a gift. So it was you who brought the tea that Chloe had been drunk of the season. I suppose you were deciding the works of Shakespeare, were you? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet! Who was the stronger? It was a delightful debate. I'm sure. Such a stimulating subject! Shakespeare! And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison into Mr. Hampshire's tea? No, never, not at all. Team Juliet won. That was me. And when I left his room, the flamboyant fellow was a fighting fit. I swear it. C categorically. Okay. Mr. Natsume, you often say the same thing about yourself, I've noticed. That you have a cursed existence. I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in Great Britain for a year now. And that time I've learned that it's no place for me. It would be very trying to live in a foreign land and adapt to the ways of another culture. When a foreigner I look, and they all stare at me. They all laugh. That's the impression I get whenever I go out. It makes me scared to leave my room. Which is why I've become a recluse. But even in my room, I find no respite from my fears. I've moved more times than I can remember. And then, one week ago, I moved into Briar Road. But why? I mean, why did you choose that place? It doesn't seem very comfortable. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money, it spoke to me. The rent? 
Obviously, there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. Cursed? Cursed how? Read his document. The man who lived there before I took the room died there. Everyone died up in here! You're dying out there, Dutch! Oh no! He was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead, and no one could explain why. Who no one wants to live in a room with his history like that? I didn't. When the letting letting agent recommended the place, I wavered. But I want books, and I and books cost money. A horrible history is a small price. To, a history is a small price to pay. Whatever I meant I could buy more books, I assigned the least like lightning. Brave or blinkered. And then come in, I moved in, I soon came to realize what I had done. I realized how horrible that room's history really was. Gosh, was it really so awful? Must be. How did the room's horrible history affect you, Mr. Natsumi? What happened? At first, it was just a feeling. The feeling of beady eyes bearing into my back, watching me. Do you think that might just have been your mind playing tricks on you? No, no, no. My mind doesn't know any tricks. It was someone else. It's been one long nightmare since I was g g given the keys of the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? All, all the souls who d died in that room lean over me in my sleep and try to strangle me! That really is horrible. I think it's just the cat, though. And now I come to think of it, it happened again last night, too. Every time I Mr. Shimps was writhing in agony from the poison in his body. I was on the verge of being suffocated by silently by those miserable spirits in my room. You may must remember that room as soon as possible. Yes, you're right, I know it. And that's why. I'm already searching for the next room for history to call home. I think perhaps you should try to avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Otherwise, I'm scared that, you'll f that you yourself may become history. <laughs> Phew, Sasato-san knows how to make the, ma the man listen. She's, look at that, uh, those eyes of hers. She knows. Of course, my, Mr. Lord of the Manor is worried about the curse on my room as well. You mean Mr. Garadam? Or Jaredam? Yes, he knows that if people keep dying there, he'll never be able to rent it out again. Well, that's true. I, for one, wouldn't go near the place. Ah, perhaps. That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' up movements. You mean because he's worried about their well-being? He doesn't seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. There must be a reason why he keeps such close tabs on the occupants in his lit rooms. What do you mean, he pays so much attention to the gas and lamps? Oh dear, no, it's nothing to do with you, Mr. Natsume. Please, forget I said anything. Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well. What's important is that Mr. Shamsir isn't, in fact, dead at all. Once he's come around and he's able to tell us what happened, we'll be able to get you released. Yes, please. Oh, I do hope you're right. Excuse me. Inspector Garrison. Or Gre Gre Gregson. Sorry. I could help overhear what you just said, and on that note, I have some good news and some bad news. Oh, which do you want first? Always, every time, the bad news comes first. When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guiding principle. Alright, well, in that case, the good news is... What? Huh? Sorry, but it's just a lot easier to explain everything that way. Then why did you ask me my preference? As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamsphere, was just unconscious. He's come around now. Yes, we saw what happened in all its terrifying glory. He's still being treated by the doctors, but we've managed to get a written statement from him already. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsumi? He's incriminating him. Oh, thank goodness. It's all over, then. I can leave this somber cell. Sorry, no. That's not on the cards. What? Why ever not, Inspector? Mr. Shamespear has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Oh, dear. You... you don't mean... I'm oh, sorry to say I do, yes. He's pointed the finger at you. Mr. Natsume. Ah! By sweet poison, and he seeketh to end my life. That wicked, 
We're gonna cut if no sake nasumi. No! So I'm afraid you'll be appearing in court as planned. You'll be wanting to make the necessary preparations. Uh, no! Why would he even? Infinitato. And so, once again, so it's like, so King Sam found himself having to take the dock of the old Bailey. Whether his room was haunted, or whether he was just terribly unlucky, I knew I had no choice. The following day, I would repent, represent him in court and do my utmost to break the curse that delighted him. To be continued! Well, of course we're going to save. The curse will never be broken in the end. Sora knows a lot about court curses. I'm going to take a brief intermission to go get a drink in a second, but I want to make sure there's music playing for people during the Be Right Back segment. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. I won't be gone very long, but I will be back in just a few moments. I'll run the ads, so take your intermission as well and whatnot. I'll be back shortly. Where is my anything? Everything is missing. That's that. There we go. Uh, oh, be right back.
Alright, so we have returned. Dinner was finished, so I was eating that up real quick, so it was a little longer than expected. <laughs> The old Bailey. This place always makes me feel strange. <clears throat> I get chills on my spine and break out in a nervous sweat all at the same time. Well, I didn't think I'd be back here so soon. That's my line! Good morning! Ah, good morning, Mr. Natsume. Bro, I would hate to be him. <laughs> There's only two together that I declared not guilty here. That's because I should prove he didn't stab Miss Green in the back. But now this... Well, the morning of the murder, and here I am again in this hellhole. Can't keep coming to court. I'm beginning to think he's right. It really does seem as though he's cursed. Why is Narahata afraid to have, 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 have bad news? Oh. Shoot. Mr. Natsumi, good morning. Yes, morning. So, here we are again. <laughs> yes, again. Judicial assistant at Miss Mikitoba Esquiress, what's the bad news? Oh dear, uh, you heard, did you? Fair point, Sora. If you come in shouting at the top of your voice, people can't help hearing what you say! <laughs> oh, I am sorry. You've done nothing wrong, Miss Sasato. Now, what is it? Well, it seems that the prosecution in today's trial will be led by Lord Barack Von Zeeks. Again? Bro, again? That Von Zeeks. Ah! Oh no, no, no! Oh god, I hope I remember his voice. The so called Reaper of the Bailey, the most legendary prosecutor in the land. It's kind of rare for an Ace Attorney game to not actually change prosecutors between games. They always change the prosecutor, except if they are in for a guest appearance, but this is new. New that they've repeat, But then again, it's one cohesive story. It makes sense not to add too many extra characters, I guess. In the trial two days ago, he pursued Soseki san and I relentlessly. Of course, by the skin of our teeth, we managed to pull through. But still. Dr. Minister's acquittal in the last trial wasn't the end of the matter. After all, yes, I know what you're thinking. The legend of the Reaper that says, nothing can save a person in the dock when Lord Van Zeeks is the prosecutor. Oh, no! <laughs> but you, That even if a person found not guilty, the accused will meet a mysterious end one way or another. We've experienced it firsthand. The man who successfully defended met the most terrifying end after his acquittal, right here in the Old Bailey. Did we ever figure out who did that? I can't remember. Ah! Do I have to put up with those ice cold eyes boring into my soul again? Cursed by evil spirits and now by the Reaper! Pair of petrifying perils, potentially! Well, if it's potentially, at least you appear to have hope, Mr. Natsume. Look, I'm stu Mr. Naruhado Esquire. Ah, yes. I'm I'm innocent. You have to believe me. You more than anyone now. Don't worry. I'll be your steadfast ally every step of the way in this battle. I promise. And this promise is it to be a hard battle, I fear. All right, into the docket we go. Well, the trial is scheduled to begin shortly. We should move into the courtroom. Let's go. Oh, yes, I forgot to say. I'm afraid he won't be able to make it. Mr. Sholmes, I mean. Okay. That's probably for the best. Oh, if he were here, he might be tip I might be tempted to rely on his help. And that could be seen as a weakness. If Lord Van Zeeks were to notice, he'd prey on it mercilessly. At least, that's my gut feeling. Sonarhado. You're right. Yes, you're so right. Oh, well said, Logan to Mr. Narhara Esquire. Well said! I swear on this sword at my side and the spirit of Kazuma, the Kazuma that it harbors. I'll show him what a Japanese lawyer can do. I'll set you free with honor. Oh, yes. All right, let's see. My 
9.40 a.m. The Old Bailey. Uh, oh god, I recognize, uh, uh, like, all of them. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the councils for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. Oh god, here he is. The prosecution is ready. I think that's his voice. The defense is ready, my lord. The ready is for the trial, my learned Nipponese friend. Not what the defense needs. It's, it's not what the defense needs. What you need is the readiness for your inevitable defeat. It's not just in my imagination. It's really there. Lord Van Zeeks has such an animosity towards us, for ja us Japanese for some reason. It was some time ago now that he first became known as the Reaper of the Bailey, I believe. This past few years, he hasn't appeared in court at all. Yet now he's back in the courtroom, though for some reason, only one I'm defending. I think they said the reason was because he believed him to be uh, a shady person or persona or something. I can't remember what the reason was in the first game. This Reaper, with his curious disdain for us Japanese, a prosecutor shrouded in mystery. Still, this isn't the time to be pondering that. I have to concentrate on Soseki san's trial. Furthermore, I now call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to fulfill your duty? Absolutely. I had a feeling this Larkin wasn't innocent before. I must say, they feel especially ruthless on days when my hat refuses to sit right. Oh, well, I'd rather like how you're wearing your hat. I think the ruthlessness is very, the ruthlessness look is very fetching, actually. I need to be somewhere at 10 o'clock. I have a very important meeting. Let's make this quick. Bro, at 10 o'clock? We ain't gonna be done in 15 minutes. I couldn't agree more. I need to take home five bob tonight, or uh, the missus will go through the roof. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here and lead his flock to a righteous verdict. Bro, what? He, he's 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 Christian, sir. The judiciary system is so very different to our own, isn't it? It's quite extraordinary to think that the power of the judgment is in the hands of six members of the public, and that the judge can only pass sentence when all jurors are in agreement about the defendant's guilt. Nice synopsis there, Sasado. Bro, I've seen like all of these people before, except the fancy lady. Six sentences in London, chosen at random, or at least that's the idea. The prosecution will draw attention to the fact that the accused was on trial here but two days ago. Accordingly, where possible, the same jurors have been asked to remain on duty for today. Very right, well, let us commence the trial. Oh, there's your bullcrap explanation as to why everyone's still here. Lord Van Zeek, is your opening statement, please? I think the only person that was swapped out was the wife of, of Mr. Jared M. Because she was on 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 the stand as a juror in that case and she was like arrested for something not guilty or whatever but arrested Lord Van Zeek your opening statement please ladies and gentlemen of the jury it is not the intent of the prosecution to task cast doubt over your past decision however the innocent verdict afforded to this eccentric Nipponese before has had dire consequences did the accused repent for his wrongdoing in that affair? Far from it. Instead, he used this freedom to perpetuate a most blood curdling crime. Namely, that of the attempted murder of his neighboring lodger, an innocent Englishman. To explain the circumstances of the crime, the prosecution called his first twisted to the stand. The detective responsible for rescuing the scene. And the accused himself. <laughs> Why are they both there? Witnesses, your names and occupations, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. Take the vampire aesthetic with us. Ah, no, no, Soseki Nasumi from the Empire of Japan. My government ordered me to come here as a student to study your language and culture. Mr. Natsumi? Yes, my lord, sir. I'm quite sure I'm not mistaken. 
that you swore an oath never to set foot in my courtroom again. I remember it as if it were yesterday. See, day before, in fact, my lord, but close enough. Ugh, believe me, this is the last place I want to be. Inspector, let's hear from you first. Explain the case for the court. Right you are, sir. The incident occurred inside the Jaredim household where the defendant has lodgings. In the ground floor room of the victim, Mr. William Shamspear. The defendant has already admitted to visiting the victim on the night in question. Mr. Shamspear collapsed in his room as a result of poisoning by tri I don't know how you say that. He was found the following morning when the landlord suspected something was wrong, broke down the door. This means I presume that the door to the victim's room was locked at the time of the incident. Correct, my lord. It was locked from the inside, making entry or exit to the room impossible. Although the victim, Mr. Shamsbury, lives a tale of the tale, he very nearly didn't. Then was halfway to heaven when we first found him. Uh, I was the first officer on the scene, my lord. And I have a photographic print here that I took at the time to show how it looked. The soap. Yes, a chilling scene indeed. Man looks very much deceased. That's right. Everyone pleasant believed that's exactly what he was. There's gas on the floor. Or something. Very well, I shall accept it in the evidence. Now then, Mr. Natsumi. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yes! As a defendant, do you have anything to say at this juncture? But that he didn't do. They're, they're haunted. Haunted by evil spirits. Good gracious, what's haunted? My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings. The dinner before me died in mysterious circumstances. A woman was stabbed by no one on the street outside. My neighbor was poisoned. And me! What about me? I've been, I've nearly been killed countless times. Killed, Mr. Natsume? Oh, sorry. Killed, Mr. Natsume? Huh. Even on that fateful night it happened, when I returned from Mr. Shamsphere's Sh room, I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed, but before long... The stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me! You must always extinguish all fires before retiring for the night, Mr. Natsumi. But it's so cold, but my runny nose would freeze. The point is, I, I didn't position my neighbor. My poison, I didn't poison my neighbor. Oh, why am I being accused of this? Why is my existence so cursed? Thank you, witnesses. I believe I have a reasonably clear picture of the events. If I could raise one more point, my lord. One more conclusive point. Conclusive? Go on. Fortunately, the victim, Mr. Hemsphere, has regained consciousness after this ordeal, and has named the true culprit. The poison consumed by the victim was administered in a cup of tea that he drank on the night in question. Tea, my lord, that was brought to the victim's room by the accused. The accused? Good grief! Order, order! Yes, that's the crux of this whole case. If Sozaki-san is innocent, then why? Why has the victim accused him? Well, Mr. Natsume, what have you to say to this accusation? That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamsphere's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I brought boiled, bottled water especially to make it. This is the result. I will never touch tea again. Never. The public pump was frozen, you say. That's not information we've heard before. That will do. Thank you. Now, according to our laws, the defense must have the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses at least once. Therefore, I call upon these witnesses now for a formal testimony. I assume the prosecution has no objection? None whatsoever, my lord. Good, then you will give your account of the events on the night in question to the court now. Y y y y y yes, my old high lord! Bro, I would hightail out of this country after that. It was around 9 o'clock that evening when I visited my neighbor, and I took some tea with me as a gift. He had a he we had a heated literary debate over a nice hot drink, which I went back to my room at around 11. 
Ugh. My tea was completely harmless. He couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise, couldn't he? It's trying to take some time to have an effect on the body. People don't kill over immediately after taking it. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. Yes, I see. It all seems relatively straightforward. Excuse me, but the testimony does raise one rather crucial point, I think. Mercedes Rumi claims his tea to have been harmless, presumably, though. The teacups have been examined for traces of the poison, haven't they? Why didn't I think of that? Well, as it happens, no. We haven't been able to. Did I hear you correctly, Spencer? Scotland Yard has failed to examine the suspect substance? How could you roll rock something so important? Isn't that the first thing you should have done? My learned Nipponese friend is falsely in incensed. In the inspector said Scotland Yard was unable to examine the tea. Not that it was overlooked. Unable? Why? Simple enough, there was none left. Not a drop. Someone must have been very thirsty indeed. Current scientific techniques, it is not possible to test for poison under such circumstances. We only need a drop, but that one drop does actually have to exist, funnily enough. Uh. The lack of examination notwithstanding, it appears nothing other than ZT passed the victim's lips on the night in question. I say, thank you. The matter is clear. Guess your eyes over is the jury, my learned friend. What? You can see that as their faces, I'm sure. The, rec the recognition of the accused's guilt. Your client's fate is all but sealed. In mere moments from now, you will lose, and your compatriot will be damned for all eternity. He's right. I can't feel all six of the jurors looking daggers at me. But I can't let them beat me down. I won't. Counsel for the defense, proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Bro, calm down. Okay, so right to this point, we're going to press everything. Nothing stood out to me about yet. Were you and your neighbor good friends then? Ugh, no! We weren't friends! Not at all! Not at all! Never, ever! A simple no would have sufficed. Then, um, why did you decide to pay him a visit? Mr. Shems, your fancy himself having a great literary knowledge. As a fellow scholar of the English literature, we find much to talk about together. Come now, no Nipponese could understand the finer points of English literature. On the night in question, that was a topic of conversation as well, I presume. It was the day of my last trial when I was acquitted. I had just arrived back at my lodgings, when I ran into Mr. Shamsbeer outside on the street. That was around six o'clock. We exchanged one or two pleasantries, but it soon turned into a heated discussion. He was on his way out at the time, though, so I promised to visit his room that evening at nine to continue our debate. But did I have ill intentions? No! Not one! Not two! Not any! Not at all! Never! Ever! A simple no would have sufficed, I feel. It's in Tilsey Court what did happen when you visited the victim's room. Stop being rude. <laughs> a, literary deba a literary debate about Shakespeare works, I think you said, didn't you? Shakespeare! Ah, oh, a very worthy topic of conversation, I must say. Oh, yes, my lord. Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? It was a profoundly pleasurable parlay. Romeo and Juliet? Who was stronger? I know I'm going to regret asking this, but how did the debate go? Well, we both agreed that we would reach a conclusion more quickly with a, re with a reenactment. So we battled it out. In Geo-Roman style, in Greco-Roman style, naturally. What? Mr. Shamsbeer had all sorts of costumes in his room for such a contest. So when you say a reenactment, you mean you were actually in costume? He as Romeo and I as Juliet. And after a vigorous, wild tussle, I as Juliet came out on top. A victory I'll cherish forever! I dare not imagine the terrible seed of carnage. The fact remains that it was you who prepared the tea and took it to the victim, correct? 
I bottled the water in my room and made a pot to take with me. I heard that he was too poor to have tea himself, you see. It's true. There was no sign of any tea leaves in the man's room. I wanted to do something nice. To be friendly. So why is he looking with such suspicion? My tea was harmless. Of course it was. And do you have any basis for that statement, witness? Yes, there was not a drop of tea left in the victim's room anywhere, was there? That's correct. Anyone would think that the fellow had never had a pot of tea before. He must have licked it dry, which is a pity, because one drop was all he would have needed to analyze it for poison. And you say that you return home to your room at 11 o'clock, Mr. Natsume? Yes, definitely. By heaven and earth, I swear it. The landlord was able to verify that, as it happens. He informed that the defendant went back to his room at 11 that night. And how was the landlord able to attest this? He, um, he said it was the lamps, I believe. The, the lamps, Inspector. When tenants returned to their rooms and started using gas, the lamps and other parts of the house flickered. Yes, Mr. Jaredem seems to pay a lot of attention to the comings and goings of his tenants. There's only one key to Mr. Shamshir's room. I know that for certain. So he must have locked the door himself from inside his room. The victim has confirmed it to be the case, yes. So I'm right! My tea was harmless! Completely harmless! If you take poison, you die! Everyone knows that! It's not that simple, I'm afraid. Well, what do you mean? Okay, so hang on a second. Okay, so... Alright, here's, here, here's two things I feel about this poison right now. I want to express my thoughts. One, they both drank tea from the same pot, the same cup as it is. So it's like, if the tea itself has been poisoned, then, then Natsume Soseki would also be at risk of being poisoned unless they're assuming he had an antidote. But why would you even risk that? The other thing is that if the poison can kill, but let's say, you know, you know, obviously dosage matters. If the guy literally drank almost the entire teapot worth of, of tea himself, by the sounds of it, because it's talking like he was so poor, he just drank it all up, then you would think for sure he'd be dead. If he was poisoned and drank that much, he couldn't have survived the poisoning. I feel like, if it had been. That's my thought right now. Unless it was in the cup, but that's still a little weird. Anyway, let's continue pressing, because I still don't have a clear picture of what's going on yet. I'll have to take for a symptom to appear, then. According to the coroner I was speaking to at the yard, about 30 minutes after the poison's consumed. And the victim suffers violent convulsions, cramping, and stiffness, and eventually dies from aspiration. Aprosixation. There's a 30-minute interval between the poison is ingested and the onset of symptoms. There seems to be a lot of different types of poison in the world, that's for sure. Oh dear, death by poisoning again. It's always so awful. 30 minutes is a long time. Certainly long enough for the victim to have locked the door behind the accused after he left. Can't deny that. And it further dis dis degrades so I think he sounds alibi. I have the medical report from the doctor who examined the victim here, my lord. Spells it out, really. The accused is the only person who could have done it. Very well, the court will add this to the royal court record as evidence. Oh yes, I see it here. Delayed onset of symptoms. Let me see. I want to look at this myself. Thirty-one. A small quantity. Okay, so, right here, it's literally, Natsume went home to his room at 11 o'clock, and the landlord has, has corroborated that. So, even if, even if he had poisoned him with that tea, he could have died at any point during that night. They were there for three hours. Even if he had drank that at exactly 11 on the dot, that doesn't explain the two and a half hour time gap here. That, that doesn't make sense. That meant he was poisoned at 1 a.m. And after that point, uh, Sozeki had already gone home. He had gone to bed. Alright. 
So we have something to work with. Great. I need another. I think I need another line. The argument still stands, you say. This is what Mr. Natsumi has been saying, isn't it? The pair of them drank tea together that night, so if there was poison in it, the victim wouldn't have been able to lock the door after the accused left later on. Exactly! Ugh! Me and my tea are innocent! Sweet and innocent, I tell you! I'm afraid, sir, that doesn't follow. You see, strength is a slow act in poison. In other words, it takes time for symptoms to appear. So you could have left the room up to 30 minutes after the victim drank the tea. And as long as you did that, Mr. Hamsphere could have locked the door after you'd gone. But, but no! We drank the tea straight away! Battle over whether Romeo and Juliet was stronger! That came after the tea! Do you have any evidence to support that statement? Of course he doesn't, though. In my great homeland, the Empire of Japan, we have a saying. Drink tea while it's hot! Sure, a proverb will satisfy the prosecution. But that's, that's, that's a, f I mean, it's not proof, but it is a good point. Why would you wait hours to drink that hot tea? He brought it over fresh. Why would you not drink it fresh? It's a very good point. It's not proof, but it's an extremely good point. You would think the British would also understand the fact that you would not wait for tea to go three hours cold. Anyway. I'm afraid there's no core here. Conclusive proof to support the defendant's assertion. On the contrary, there are sufficient grounds to infer his guilt in this manner. Bro, well, that's not even fair. No. That's the extent of their testimony, is it? If I could have voiced a personal opinion, Mr. Narahado, please do. And I love it when you speak. Of course. Go ahead. Mr. Natsumi is arguing for his innocence so adamantly and so persistently, yet Inspector Grayson just brushes what he says aside. It's really quite infuriating. It, it really is. I agree. So we need to find an inconsistency in what the inspector is saying, I think. I'm afraid so. As things stand, the jurors are sure to find Mr. Nesumi guilty. As I see it, we need to focus on is the poison and the tea. Let's listen carefully to this testimony again. Yes! Okay, so I think I know what I need to go for then. So I'm gonna save. I I mean I'm not gonna take a hit just because I put on the wrong statement. I know what I'm doing. There we go. The argument still stands, you say. I think not, Inspector. Come again. I think you'll find that you have overlooked a very significant chronological inconsistency here. Chrono what? What are you on about? According to this report, the victim must have consumed the poison at around 1.30 in the morning. And yet, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, left the victim's room at 11. Eh! Yes, that's right. There's more than two hours of missing time here. In other words... If there was poison in the tea that Mr. Natsumi brought to the victim's room, how could the victim have fallen ill to it two and a half full hours after the defendant left? Wah! Dude, they had the same movement! Why is he freaking out? I'm proving him right! The defense's argument is entirely reasonable. How do you respond, Lord Van Zeex? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Not the chalice! Not the chalice! We're in trouble. The Reaper's berries. That's a perfectly good point, though. He smells it, but doesn't drink. Pray forgive the discourtesy if my mind was wandered. I was considering what cuisine would be best complement the context of my hallowed chalice this luncheon. What? How could that have happened, you ask? I do hate to shatter illusions, but my Nipponese friend appears to be chasing a phantom idea. Phantom? It is so hard to imagine the sea victim drank his tea earlier than the accused had left. For example, as the time stated in the medical reports, yes, at around half past one. 
Mission has to be brought to tea with him and drink together with his neighbor. And in Japan, there is a well-known saying. Please don't say it. Drink tea while it's hot. Bruh! And in my country, there is even more apt saying. There is nothing is more refreshing than cold tea. The, the point is, if there was such a long gap, there may, there may be many other ways to explain how the victim claimed to be poisoned. Other possibilities. What sort of possibilities, Council? I, sp I spoke without thinking. Well, for example, the man could have had another visitor. Another visitor? That's a very bold assertion, my learned friend. From someone who has nothing to substantiate it. Or, or, the victim could have taken the poison of his own volition. You suggest that this may have been a suicide council. Mr. Shamsbeer was categorically de de has categorically denied suicide. The idea can run and be and can and must be discounted. Discounted. But but he could be lying. Oh my God, this is not very strong, bro. It's just nothing but silence. Something wrong, Lord Vanzies. I was listening to the sound of the carriage pulling up outside the courtroom. But I forgive the discourtesy. Carriage? What carriage? It would seem that the key player in this case has just arrived. Oh no. The victim himself. Out, out, brief candle! Life's but a walking shadow! Here he is, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. Tis a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Who, sir, are you? William Shamspear, my lord, alas, twas I, undone by these bitter events. I am the victim. What? What's he doing here? The prosecution seeks to call this gentleman to the stand. With his testimony, my learned friends, the futile resistance will be utterly crushed. You're calling him as a witness. Very well, Cancel. I grant your request with interest. I'm curious to discover what the court shall hear from the victim himself. My god. We let him hear that stick. Happy am I, Shamspear, to regale thee with my tale of woe, my lord. But, but, I still have my own tale to tell you, my own tale of worse woe. I can regale the court with the tale of my perfect innocence in perfect English. That will do, Mr. Natsume. Let the court now hear from the victim. Oh my god. What? The, what? Why are you here? Alright, Popeye the Sailor Man's here. Yes, I think. I feel sure we've caught a glimpse of that man before. Twice now. State your names and occupations for the court, please, witnesses. Hi, writer of words so sweet they do scent the breeze, an inventor of ideas so profound they compose the earth. The unrivaled poet and un the unmatched scribe William Shakespe Shakespeare were the great bard to be recalled of two life anew. Lo, what a magnificent man! Good fellows, I am he who ponders such a miracle, William Shakespeare. Er, oh, um, the name's Meterman. A drawn B meterman. Alright for the Alt Altima Gas Company. East End Branch Office. Ah, I remember now. It was yesterday on Briar Road. Oh yes, she's right, it's him. Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? He looks like he's trying to see into the Suzuki son's lodgings. Something wrong, Mr. Narahato? Um, excuse me, could we have a word? That's a shit. 
Bro, he posed and just vanished. I know, I didn't see the, see the whole scene. It was literally an hour ago. Yes, we spotted him outside Mr. Jared at his house that morning. And he's a gas company employee. What does he have to do with this case? So, Mr. William Shamspear, you are the victim in this miserable affair, correct? Oh, heaven, oh, hell, do you command me to remember. That sweet poison that distance crossed me and crossed my innocent lips. I subpoenaed him for the trial, with the doctor's permission, naturally. Hearing this testimony is ag aggrieved will remove any room for doubt from the jurors' minds, I'm sure. Behold, you have only to arrange the letters of my name to see that that's me, the strapper, an angel indeed. It did, so honestly, but it was quiet before you came in, too. Thus I be noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart, as all heavenly angels be. Because there isn't a less contrived meaning in your name. No, not at all. The jurors seem to be very moved by this man, I'm afraid. They're actually taking this Seraph's anagram idea seriously. Thank you, Witness, for your illuminating introductions. But my lord, what's the man next to Shams Mr. Shams are doing here? The gas man, I mean. Uh, what, me? Uh, well, now. And let me to a delight in my learned friend. You recall, I presume, your earlier impertinence. When you suggested that the victim had another visitor to his room on the night in question. And moreover, that the victim is a compulsive liar. What? No, no, I didn't quite say that. This young chin stroker is here to convert your wild claims. Consecutive. Consecutive. Blah, blah, blah. Is that not so, Mr. Meter Man? It, hang on, nope. I'm just here. I have my call for your formal testimonies. You will tell the court as lunacy as possible what happened on the night in question. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Yes, it doth pain me, but that the truth be spoken, the truth of that wintry night of my discontent. Uh. Angels are elderly. <laughs> <laughs> the snowly about my neighbor did cometh in the evening bearing a gift of tea. But merry bitter was his drink, and when he left, I did fall prostrate on my table. "'Twas that he alone that did pass my lips that late hour, not else. "'I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, "'keeping an eye on his room. "'No one else visited his room but that short little round back to Eastern fella. "'Wait, what did you say? "'You were keeping an eye on Mr. Shamster's room all night?' "'That's right.' Of course, the bloke's window is all but blocked up, isn't it? But there's a little gap in the bricks where you can see into the room. So I spent the night trying to keep my teeth from chattering as I peered in through that. W why? The question is, sir, why? Yes, thank you. Good! Well, now, that's because he's on my list. What a piece of work is a man. Wherefore, wouldst thou not stare into wonderment? What are you talking about? This buzzing busybody hath not part in his play. In this play. I pray thee, pray him no heed. Make no more ado about his tenacious, his tedious words. What do you say about me? Calm yourself. This court is concerned with what happened on the night in question. Nothing more. Indeed, that is so. And as the testimony we have just heard clearly reveals... There was no one other than the accused person at the time who could have carried out this crime. Except the person spying on him all night! God, is it really that... Dude, how dumb are these people? Well, I believe this may be the final testimony of the trial. Now, counsel, defense may proceed with a cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Alright. Time to... Still got a liar. He lies as easily as he breathed. To be clear, my neighbor, my neighbor, you're referring to the defendant, Mr. Nasumi. 
Oh, indeed, sire. Perhaps thou wouldst I call him the man from upstairs. And at what time does the mustachio Nipponese visit you in your room? Our meeting was promised for an hour of nine, and lo, did he come to tender a gift of fragrant tea. Details of which are according to the defendant's own testimony, yes. At least at eight, not nine. And we were boiled in such literary debate as history hath not seen before. By which I presume he means their discussion about who was stronger, Romeo or Juliet. I, Shamspear, did play the part of young Romeo, well as my neighbor did play the fair Juliet's. Each of us dressed as our would-be characters be to bring weight upon our merry upperman ex experiment. I don't imagine the scene. Frailty, thy name is woman. Canst thou imagine how dismayed I was? Yes, I heard of the eastern art of jujitsu, but near did I dream it would be a skill practiced by the commonly maiden. Juliet beat Romeo up. This is not helping our case. I believe the court has heard enough about your earth-shattering literary debate. Perhaps you could reiterate your statement about the tea that the accused brought to your room. My liege, I am thy servant. Gladly would I do thy building. Let me stop you there. Mr. Natsumi left your room at 11 o'clock, but it wasn't until after 2 that that poison made, your, made you collapse. And I'm also more than 3 hours of missing time. If the defendant had really put the poison in your tea, that three hour window of time is something you're going to have to explain. Gladly! Tis an easy task. What? I did drink of the tea, not while my guest did his tarry, but after he took leave of me. Faith, twas stone cold, but at one hour post midnight, verily were my lips parched. Objection. That doesn't sound normal. Nay, tis quite ordinary, sire, after all. Thou wouldst recall our fiery debate? Amidst such argument, there'd be no time for fiery tea. Romeo and Juliet again, and who was stronger? This is Mr. Shamspear. In summary, allow me to confirm. Did you not come here with the intention of naming your attacker? But of course, my liege, t'was the stooped lover of words did attempt to shuffle me of this off this mortal coil. Ah, we all know what that means. So, you didn't have any kind of evening meal? Dinner? Supper? Soap? Ha! Fie, fie on luxury, fie on gluttony. To eat thrice daily is but a waste of time. Sorry? I would eat that. I would that my belly were full. Love no more often the sun doth rise. Well, most heroic eating habits, I must say. Night and day do I fill my hours with learned study of the great bard and playwright. Hence it is there, there... There doth not my chamber be than the consumes of mine art. Costumes. That will appear to be the case. The little rodent was found starved to death in your room. Gross! Now I think of it, that's not just food that was conspic conspicuously missing from that room, was it? I wasn't a single play or script anywhere. For I have devoured them all. You've eaten them? Every word with it be within my skull. Didst thou imagine otherwise? Right, that wasn't misleading at all. Now, could you turn around, do you think? Which brings us to the conclusion that the only way the poison could have passed the victim's lips is in the tea. Uh, I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night keeping it on his room. Why? But the windows of the house have all been filled in. A historical artifact of the now defunct window tax. Yeah, you're right there. All bricked up horribly. But as it happens, there's a little part in the brickwork at the bottom corner that's been opened up. I was looking in through that gap. Yes, there were a few bricks loose, weren't there? And for some strange reason, a couple of bars of soap lined up on the edge outside the wall as well. I don't like going around poking much into other people's business, especially on freezing cold nights. But them's more, so that's what, I'll be, that's what I'll keep doing, as long as there's breath in my body.
Why? What's with all the theatricals today? Out of interest, Mr. Meterman, after the accused had left and returned to his own lodgings, did you see the victim leave the room at all? No! He never left! He was in that room the whole time, as far as I'm concerned! I wish I could do a Popeye impression, but there's no way I can. And as we can therefore discount the possibility of suicide. How can you be so sure of that? The police carried out a thorough investigation of the scene and found no receptacle for the poison. And since we know the victim didn't leave his room and since didn't dispose of the poison's container himself, it's clear that this was no attempted suicide. The only culprit could have been only the culprit could have removed the receptacle. Ah oh, yes, ludicrously explained, Council. Thank you. It really was. You can't argue with the logic. No one else visited his room. Okay, I need to read that one. You say, a short little round-backed eastern fella. So you can't be sure it was the defendant, then. Objection. How many other short little round-backed Nipponese with a mustache do you think there are in London? Well, of course, it's only an arrow gap, and it was quite dark. So I, I didn't notice the mustache. But he showed up at around nine, so I'm pretty sure of myself. And when the person you saw arrived, did he and Mr. Shamsky drink tea together? Nah, sorry. I couldn't say. Why not? Because I couldn't see in the room all that well, could I? But what I did see was the silhouette of that little round-backed fellow wearing a pretty dress. And the pair of them started some kind of wrestling match, I tell you. I didn't know what to make of it. Uh... I suppose... That was the Romeo and Juliet championship battle. They're getting underway. <laughs> I love the way she phrased it. Mr. Mitterman, allow me to confirm one final time. Apart from the accused, can you state with certainty that no one else has visited the victim on the night in question? No question, Gasman's honor. Okay, but... Wait, what? Who's outbursting? Natsume? Wait, what? My lord! Goodness me, yes, Mr. Foreman. I've kept my mouth shut and nothing up to now, but this has gone on long enough. Are y'all with me? Yes! I'm ready to understand that you ladies and gentlemen of the jury are in agreement with, with one another. Is that you've reached an un a unanimous decision? Do right, with Y'all with me? Yes! Wait, no, the defense is in the middle of cross-examination. To be honest, I was holding out a bit of hope for you, young man. Especially after you identified those few hours that allowed the accused leaving the victim's room. Yes, the three missing hours, as you put it. But in the end, what difference do they make? Not as far as I can see. And since that's how that's now apparent, there's really no reason to delay our decision any longer. Like I was saying before, if we don't take Fob Bob home, we deny the miserable blower top. Oh, uh, what's that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. Very well. Let the court be a P prize of your decisions. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leadings to the defendant's culpability. Bro. This is so dumb. Well, I have a chance. All of you. Well, it would appear that the jury is indeed unanimous. So, this time at last, it seems as it will be done. All's well that ends well, as they say. This calls for a toast, I feel. To the guilty being punished. Ah! Oh, bastard! I don't buy the dude. This is not. Get up, Mister Arhato, please. This trial isn't over yet. What? What do you mean, Miss Sasato? What about the information I found in this encyclopedia of British law? I have the obscure right that belongs to the defense in these situations. Remember? Duh! Why are they acting like we're dumb? A, summon, a, sum, a summonation examination. 
Yes, that's right. We don't have a jury in Japanese courts, of course. But here in British Court of Law, if we can reverse the decision of a majority of the jurors, we can force the trial to continue. The trial can't end now. Whatever it takes, I just can't let that happen. The defense moves to invoke its right to a summonation, summonation examination, my lord. Why am I not surprised that my learned Nipponese friend's inability to admit defeat? You choose to cling desperately to some archaic rule so you barely comprehend instead of accepting the truth. Certainly no other defense counselor in recent times has exercised the right to a summonation examination because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. Except I've done it like several times! Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. This court will proceed with a summonation examination as outlined in the Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Are you and your mellows fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we know all about this young lad's tenacity. And we're ready for it. Bro, it's not a competition! Very well! In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the de defendant guilty of the crime for which he stands accused. Goodness gracious. Judicial findings. The victim may, be not, may not be well off, but, but he's a noble man and straight up. There's no reason to doubt the man. Well, I do declare the good gentleman has no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just look at the accused by comparison. He's Japanese, stoops all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. Rude! There's no evidence to suggest the gaggling actor is a fraudsman, for now at least. Ugh, I really don't care. Like, just I just need to try it in quickly. Three hours of missing time is nothing when you reach my age, you know? Nothing at all! Okay. I knew it. Every single one of them seems completely convinced. It would seem that all the jurors have come to the conclusion that Mr. Shamspear is a fine, upstanding, and honest citizen. If you ask me, they've all been bewitched by his strange theatrical movements. And sadly, nothing Mr. Natsumi has said appears to have registered at all. Well, here goes. Let's not forget. I pleaded with the jury on Mr. Sasaki-san's behalf before, and it worked. So you never know. Before we begin, it might be an idea of for me to remind you exactly how a summation examination works with Sonarahata. Oh. Well, you're still very new to British law, after all. That's true, I suppose. And Suzuki son's fate is entirely in my hands now, too. There's always a chance I might have forgotten some crucial detail. Perhaps I should hear Sasaki Tosan out. I wonder, should I let her talk to me through that again, or not bother? Just, let's just refresh it. We are, Ramirez. How are you doing tonight? Alright, so if you remember, the key to changing the jurors' minds is the things that they say themselves. Yes, it's coming back to me. First, it's important to listen very carefully to each juror's statement. Then, if it sounds as though one of the statements might be might contradict the other, I have to pit the corresponding two jurors against each other to prove one, one or the other of them wrong. Yes, that's right. In many ways, it's very similar to a normal cross-examination. Alright then, all that remains now is to do it. Without further ado, please, counsel, proceed with the summonation examination. I do a job? Dang, that sucks. Yes, my lord. Let's do it. Jury examination. The defense's rebuttal. The may not will. Well, there are people, plenty of people in London who seem to need normal rapport. Could some of them also be liars? No doubt about it. Like that shaky client of yours, for example. Absolutely not. Mr. Sasumi is no liar. Look, the point is, the only thing that will pass the victim's lips that night was that Japanese man's tea. You take the gasp and sesame into account as well. The truth couldn't be any more clear. Ah, well, that's alarmingly logical. But let me be frank here. I'm a gentleman with a gentleman's values. If it turns out that the old Shakespearean chum is a rotten liar after all, I'd gladly change my decision about the defendant. And I'm sure my fellow gentlemen on this jury would do the same. Isn't that right? 
Well, um, yes, perhaps. Though I don't see it happening. Ah, what's that? Elderly gen on the end here, you know. You have to speak up! Look, I really don't care all this nonsense. I just need this trial to be over. How many gentlemen do we actually have on the jury, then? Bro, these guys suck. I don't care if this whole man goes to, goes to prison forever. I gotta go home to my wife! Alright, sir, I may hold you to that. Don't forget what you said. <laughs> Alright, what you got? Are you saying that you believe the man to be trustworthy because he's rather splendid? No, that's not what I said. The point is, the man is the victim here. What reason would he have to lie? And yes, he is rather splendid. Oh my god. So you say, yet again. Meanwhile, the man who stands accused behaves so suspiciously, it's exhausting to look at him. I'm afraid, he's not splendid at all. Splendid logic there, madam. Thank you so much. I hate this guy at the hat. No, 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 one of those things is the reason to find the man guilty. But he is fishy. There's no point dancing around the fact. He's Japanese, and he has a mustache, and he stoops. You see, you arrive at the conclusion in just three steps. Three steps, like a waltz, in fact. This guy sucks. You know, the more I think about it, the more this trial seems like a dance. You seem to be several steps ahead of yourself, though. And you're on the wrong foot. No, there's nothing... There's a, that's the thing with circumstantial evidence here. There's actual proof of the defendant's guilt. But the victim's version of the events is backed up by what the big chin man next to him says, isn't it? Bruh. One, he saw the Japanese man there. Two, he saw no one else. And three, he saw the Japanese man there. Oh. That's another three steps. All this really does seem more and more like a waltz, doesn't it? <sighs> right, and the prosecution will waltz its way to victory if I let you speak much more. For now. A fraudsman. What do you mean by that, madam? It really is a most tiresome problem for the company. Most irritating. We can be absolutely certain that that customer is stealing from us, but without hard evidence, we can't even threaten to take action for fear of being sued. I'm sorry, you've lost me a little there. Who are you? I'm the wife of Augustus Alamont, owner of the Alamont Gas Company. Good gracious, Alamont Gas, you say? Gas is the future of energy in this country and around the globe. Proper handling is essential. As I'm sure our employee from the Far East, from the East End branch office, would be the first to agree. Absolutely, Lady Quinby. Got to be used properly. Alamont Gas is the best in the world, of course. I don't know what his voice should be. Ah, I think we may have solved the mystery of the, of the bow from earlier, Mr. Minarhado. What? Right. He bowed in defense of his employer's wife, did he? Ah, so, what I'd be right in assuming, that the reason Mr. Meterman was watching that Sherry Shamspear up to in his room, I'm afraid that there's no end to the lengths of population of the East and will go in order to steal our gas. So I rightly, I really have no choice when the company identifies someone as a possible fraudsman, but dispatch a worker for, to watch the day and night. We're very thorough in our investigations. So you mean Mr. Shamspear is... I wouldn't come out and say it in public, but you can finish that sentence with, with a grubby little gas thief. You have noted the public gallery, the public gallery here, haven't you? Bruh. The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Faith wouldst thou wound me with thy words, were I to let them penetrate the skin. But seraphs hear not insults, only choirs of angels in song. We men have evidence yet, but my workers won't stop buzzing around you until they find it. And when they do, you'll find yourself blasted back to your angelic heights in an element gas explosion. So Mr. Shamsbury has been... What's that noise? So Mr. Shamsbury has been stealing gas. I wonder, do you remember number four? If you wouldn't mind adding that information to your statement. My pleasure. Was it the bit about ripping that thief apart you enjoyed? A little before that part. About... about, about Abject violence if it's not to a shovel. Yes, of course. I kind of like her. She's really pretty. This could be a, This could shift the balance. The victim puts a fine performance reality. He's a common thief of my company's gas.
These two statements are... Oh, my God. Really? What? I'm not reading this. Wait a minute. Okay, well... I did. The key to it is crazy different things to say. I know. You keep talking about needing to take home some time, take home some money. What's it all about, sir? Fini finish last. What's this about? What's this about? What's that? Talk about the Derby at Hyde Park, aren't I? I was at the Queen's Cup last week, wasn't it? A derby. It was a dead skirt. That's the thing. I couldn't lose. It's my wife's secret savings. Like, but then the hope was old mayor went and did the unthinkable. Ugh, stupid, that stupid finish lash. Oh, dear. I think it's clear what happened. Isn't it? This is the day that Mrs. uses her savings for a trip down the pub. So come on. Let this business lie now. Just give it up. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> what do you mean by that, sir? Well, I'm not one to boast, but I get up at five every morning. I do. Five? five? You're a really early riser then, aren't you? Oh, what's that now? I said you're an early riser. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I like to while away the hours of the evening reading books as well. But by about two in the morning, I'm usually too tired to go on. He sleeps at two in the morning and gets up at five. Oh my, that means he only has three hours of sleep each day. Uh, what's that, dear? Only three hours of sleep each night. Bruh. That's right, you see. Three hours of missing time. Like I said, it's not much, is it? This really isn't helping. The key to summation and examinations is identifying contradictions between the jurors' statements, Mr. Naruhado. Right, and once I found two jurors whose statements can't coexist, I need to put those jurors against one another. Then hopefully, when they see that they're saying doesn't make any sense, they'll just change their leaning. Yes, and if you're able to change the minds of the majority of the jurors, the trial will continue. But conversely, if you're unable to do that, the judge will declare the trial over and move to adjudication. And I can't let that happen. Somehow or another, I have to turn this trial around. Okay. I just hit the wrong person. These two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious! Those two to be your fruit council. Jury number one. Eh, what are you yelling about, lad? I presume you've heard jury number four statement made by the wife of the owner of the Alamont Gas. Well, yes. The victim, who you claim to be a noble, straight up man, in fact turns out to be a common thief. So the good lady says, but there's no evidence, is there? You and I have both heard them say as much. It's true. We don't have any e have evidence as such just yet. But the claims aren't baseless, you know. What? You heard me. Seeing as his operation has already been compromised, I would suggest that the court hear his testimony from our East End Branch office employee over there. Now do whatever you say, my lady. Guestman's honor. Jern number one, you say you're a man of your word. If I could show that Mr. Shamspear was a liar, you assured, you assured me that you would reconsider your decision about the defendant's guilt. Mm -mm. Yes, I did say that. As a man of honor, I'll hold to it. As I'm sure the gentleman of the jury will. Me? Oh, well, yes. Now that we've found out the man's a liar, perhaps we ought to consider the, fer the, further ma the, ma the matter further. Well, if I'm perfectly honest, I haven't heard half of what you've all been saying. So if this means you'll recap a few points, that would suit me down to the ground. Oh no, I'm not having any part of this. I want the trial over and done with. In that case, I shall change my leaning. 
So, Mr. William Shem Spear, if that is your real name, we are the jury demand to know exactly what kind of a man you really are. Bro, freaking old Crodger over there won't hold up to his word as a gentleman, but the woman will. I thought you were going to be kind of... That's four jurors. Four for not guilty. Yes, Mr. Narahato. Victory! <laughs> Journey number four is pretty good. Journey number six is still funny, too. Order! Order! Well, this is quite extraordinary, I must say. As a result of the defense's summation examination, the jury's leading has changed. Now only two jurors say guilty, while it's four say not guilty. I therefore declare this court to be in a state of dis disaccord. And order the trial to continue. Yes, okay, so Ramirez, at the end of... FIRE! So in the, uh... Ramirez, in the, in the past, Sasato learned something about a case that they did, so, and told uh, Naruhato to go over the notes of the case. So, Naruhato is going over the notes of the case, and we are just remembering the events that had happened. This takes place between cases 4 and 5 of the previous game, so we went back in time. She's not with us again yet. We're re reliving the past. Basically. And we're trying to find clues. Bruh. That's the whole thing. You have spoilt my bu the bouquet, Mr. Shakespeare. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury now find they are unable to trust you, the victim. I won't even speak. But you gods will give us. Some folks to make us men. So God mend me. I do swear. This gasman speaketh that which it concerns him most. Not but gas, not but thin air. Aye, it burneth bright a while, but hath no substance. And it doth reek foul. Oi! What do you say? Do I take it, Mr. Shamespear, that you deny the allegations of gas thievery? Most heartily, my lord, dost thou forgot? Hast thou forgot? I am a seraphath, an angel, noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart. Ugh, you flowery mouth, pompous bane pole! Just cause I ain't got the evidence yet. Mr. Shamspear, if, in fact, you are not noble of mind, sweet of nature, or honest of heart, if you are a liar, then your testimony should have no sway in this courtroom. Muppet. <laughs> it is my considered opinion that at the present time no other possible culprit of this crime has been identified. All test being heard by the court thus far heavily implicates the defendant. In short, it would not be unreasonable at this stage for me to rule on the case. Oh no. However, in light of the fact that the jury has expressed concern about the fidelity of the witness. I believe it would be inappropriate for this court not to pursue the point further. I assure you, my lord, that that would be a waste of the court's time. The gas and this case are unrelated. Jury number four. Yes. Didn't you say before that although you had no hard evidence to prove this man has been stealing gas, you have strong grounds for suspecting him? That's right. We do. Don't we, hmm, Marker? Absolutely, Lady Queenby. Quinby. Quinby. Gasman's honor. Very well, then. We will hear your testimony now. You will tell the court precisely why you believe the victim, Mr. William Shamspear, has been stealing gas. Yes, my lord. Will be my pleasure. On the outlaw gas name, I swear. If I may, my lord. Go ahead, madam. Sorry. This work assessment may have a significant bearing on the game of my husband's company. Therefore, I should like to take the stand alongside him in a supervisory role, if you wouldn't mind. Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Sweet as honey! Yeah, 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 yeah! Very well. As an exception, I shall honor your request. Thank you, my lord. You wait till the boss gives you an info! Who's gonna sting? You mark my words! Bro, he's simping hard. So you both testified before the court. On the subject of the illegal consumption of the Alamont Gas Company's fuel. Yes. Is that clear, my good man? 
Clear as Alamont gas, my lady! Which is the clearest in the world! Popeye looking face. Do you think the gas has gone to his head, Mrs. Sato? I think the man is just a very dedicated employee, Mr. Naranato. <laughs> Bruh. The Alamont Gas Company's investigation. I'm proud to be the company's East End branch investigator and meter money collection agent. Alamont Gas Meters accept thumpity bits, each coin giving customers about two hours of gorgeous gas. And yet, the meter in Mr. Shams room didn't have a single coin in it. The mirror doesn't appear to have been tampered with, though, and the collection agent has the only key. Somehow he's been using all the flaming gas he wants without paying a penny. And if that's not thieving, what is? <laughs> Daniel Ramirez. Play for Gibbs at this courtesy. The irrelevance of this testimony caused me to turn my to my shallow chalice. What do you mean by that remark, Lord Van Zeeks? Does the mustachios nipponies poison the gangling excuse for an actor or didn't he? That is all that should concern this court. And yet, now we must listen to this abhorrence. FIRE! It's clearly what separates the vast British Empire, your eastern island nation, is no more than geographical existence. But, but this could have be crucial testimony. Cross-examination, let's go ahead. <laughs> Do what you will. Lord Van Zeeks appears to be in a violent mood. Yes, he does. An attempt at poisoning and an in incidence of the gas theft with no supporting evidence. It's true that they would appear completely unrelated at first glance, but I wonder the truth tends to be buried in the most unusual of places. Speaking of which, I want to actually look at something. This pops crops my mind here. We haven't looked at this photo photograph yet. Okay, so there's a bunch of spilled junk on the floor. I that's what I noticed at first. There's the teapot that had the tea in it. Apparently, I was wondering if there was maybe a leak that somehow uh, the gas was in the teacup and he poisoned himself with the gas. Maybe I don't know. But I don't have any information on the gas itself. Uh, let's see. It doesn't say. Unless, of course, he reheated it by picking the lock or something or whatever he did. I know, we need more information to make that, that jump. Van Dix thinks he's Sephiroth. And the first step in uncovering it will be to establish just who and what this man really is. Give you the month, aim me the info. So does that mean you enter people's houses in order to empty their gas meters? That I do. I have to try to catch people when they're in. Then I ask permission to come inside and do my business. Does that mean you've been into Mr. Nasumi's room before as well as that of Mr. Shamsbeer? Well now, interesting you should bring that up. Because I couldn't believe how little money was in his meter. I mean, how the pair of them survive in the winter is beyond me. It really is. Knowing Mr. Natsume, he probably spends all his gas money on books. And then when he's finished reading them, he probably burns them for warmth. You will kindly re reiterate your statement about the gas meters themselves, Mr. Meterman. I must say, really, but as you wish. Alamont gas meters except Okay, I don't need to read that bit. So all London houses that have a gas supply are fitted with these gas meters, are they? They are the latest model. The height of technology, developed by our company, Alamont Gas. Anyone who uses our gas will have one of these meters in their property, yes. So if a three-pence coin gives you two hours of gas, most people would use about three coins a night. Uh, a bit more than that, usually, if they have both gas lights and a gas stove, that is. Thinking about it, so Seki-san doesn't have a fireplace in that room of his, does he? Some people still choose to use candles, of course, and only have gas for heating. 
Ah, yes, I do remember seeing candles in Miss Insumi's room, actually. And how does the money on the, in the meter get back to you at the gas company? Every three days, gas would like me to visit the properties on the gas supply and empty the meters of coins. I must say, the design and manufacture of the new meter cost the company an awful lot of money. But happily, it did put a stop to people not paying their dues, for the most part. Uh, because they have to pay in advance, you mean. Yes, exactly right. Bro, that bumblebee freaking broom. Out of interest, how long has this been going on? Weeks and weeks he's been pinching gas off of us for ages! And you've examined the meter in Mr. Shamster's room, I take it. Naturally, we took it off the wall and went over it with a fine tooth comb. And found nothing suspicious at all, I presume. No, I'm afraid we didn't. Which is exactly why I demanded a new type of meter be produced. One with an indestructible lock, the Sham Spear Special. That sounds like it would have cost an awful lot of three three penny pieces. But even after all that, the rascal's the rascal's meter was still empty. I never forget their humiliation when I opened up the money box and found it bare. You what? I said, you what? And then the look on his face, that smarmy smile of his. <sighs> I pulled the meter straight off the wall and took it back to the office. But you know what? Nothing. Just not a trace of it being jimmied open anywhere. Not a single sign. And what's happening to my salary as a result? Down by sheer things, it's three shillings a day. That's what? A life-threatening situation in a number of ways. Incidentally, what became of that meter? Nothing became of it. I've still got it. Oh. Right here. No wonder they call you Meterman. Um... Oh, I think it would be prudent for the court to question this item while the trial is still ongoing. Yeah, really. Although, at first glance, there doesn't appear to be anything unusual about it. Let's move on this along, shall we? Continue with your testimony. So I would say it has as much value as the contents of that meter. Oof! Let's take a look. It's in a book. Okay. Alright, I want to look at it here. Okay. That's a very sturdy looking padlock, isn't it? And the money box is sealed with beeswax, too. So if Mr. Strongs were to get up any mischief, he'd be found himself, he found out immediately. Sonora Hato! Mischief is that, that kind of that sort of thing that Mr. Sholmes would... You know you didn't finish that sentence, don't you? <laughs> well, anyway, it's understandable that the gas company would want to safeguard the money that's rightfully theirs. But it does feel a little over the top, perhaps, doesn't it? <sighs> okay. So there's a hole here. Oh, what's... Have you spotted something, Mr. Narahato? Just here, there's a little hole. Do you see? Oh, goodness, you're right. I wouldn't have noticed. It's not very... It's not a very neat hole, is it? Not professionally made, I'd say. So, you think it might have been opened up by Mr. Shamspear? Possibly. It seems the people at Alamont Gas must have missed it. Well, it certainly seems to go all the way through to the inside. Yes, but there's no way a coin would fit through there. That's true, but even so, it seems more than a little suspicious. Okay, it's attached to the lock to the coin box. That's what I was trying to figure out. Anything else? I think we're good. Okay. There's only a key for all of your meters? Well, in truth, there's another key in the company vault at our main office. But even if someone had somehow managed to get a hold of a key, we'd know if the coin box had been opened. Oh, how? I came up with a rather clever way to expose any little shenanigans as it happens. Oh, she would, huh? Don't you care to explain? Well, now, in order to empty a mirror, you have to unlock the padlock and remove the cover. But when I close the cover again, I stick a little beeswax seal on it, you see. 
A seal? Like the sort of thing you'd put on an envelope, you mean? Something like that, yes. Basically, you can't remove the cover again without breaking a seal. Now, in the case of Mr. Shamsu's meter, there were no coins inside at all, as I said. And the seal hadn't been broken either. So that would mean Mr. Shamspear somehow managed to steal coins from inside the meter without opening it. It would seem so, but that would be impossible. But he's still getting the gas, so it's like it's not like he's not using gas. How do you know that he's been using gas, though? Well, now, since I started investigating this bloke, I've been in his room more than a few times. On every single occasion, his lamps have been blazing and his stove pounded. It's the middle of winter, and he still turns to me, sweat dripping down his neck and, and down his cheeks, and says, Get thee into a nunnery. I'm like, indeed! Ah, I can wring the bloke's neck. I just get a hot under collar, but still. I go pop up with that flaming meter. It's empty! He's robbing me of my salary, too! What's wrong with the world? Where's the justice? But how can Mr. Shamster possibly be stealing the money? I don't understand. The civil explanation is right before your eyes. Hold what? On. It toast. Till you eventually realize that the gasman could be an accomplice. You what? Good lord! It must be plausible indeed. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? This is poking you with a broom. Uh, another broom, the umbrella. Oh, please, Lady Queen Bee, I'm a faithful worker. And besides, if the money is as gas because doesn't tally how much gas has been used, you dock our tell you the same amount. So you'd be stealing money only to have the same amount taken from your wages. Clearly, that makes no sense. Perhaps it's a case of losing the battle to win the war. No, 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 I'm not going to stir up the hornet's nest. If I wouldn't steal them from the company, I'd be finished. If it seems that there is no evidence who supports the claims of theory made against the victim, because Mr. William Shamspear is innocent. He's not! Come on! FIRE! Plurry, forgive me that shatters some illusion my learned Nipponese friend was clearly on the... Ugh. Okay, well, I know that's not. It's both. That's both. Because... Well, I certainly didn't expect to overcome another crime that looked like it had been taking place in the very same room. According to the testimony, it's only the meter in Chamsher's room that's under suspicion. It does seem as though perhaps it, nothing has to do with involving Mr. Zatsume. I know, it does seem that way. But the fact is, since I've been practicing law in England, I feel like I've encountered this at least once already. Cases that are interlinked. Oh. It might seem that two cases have nothing to do with one another at first, but in fact they're intimately connected. Yes, we have experienced that before, haven't we? I wonder if this is another instance. Perhaps, but we can't be sure of that yet. If the Alamont Gas Company has been investigating Mr. Shamsbury so earnestly, there must be something to it. But then, how has he been managing to steal their gas? Um, I'm going to say I'm going to present it here. It has been tampered with. Lady Elamont, I'm afraid to say that this meter clearly does show signs of having been tampered with. What? Do her eyes are like something else. Get away! I've been I've been over and over that thing. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with it. In that case, what do you have to say about this small hole that's been made at the base of the coin box? Hole? Oh, what? You're right. You're quite right. There's a little hole here. The meters aren't supposed to have that. None of the others do. In other words, we can assume that Mr. Shamsbury secretly opened up this hole himself. Yes, I wouldn't be at all surprised, but why? Yeah, why? I mean, it's tiny. You couldn't get a farting through that, farthing through that. Lady Ant Alamont. I wonder if you could give the court some more details about your meter design. What sort of details? Well, what I'd specifically like to know is uh, how it differentiates coins, I think. How does a meter tell the difference between different coins? 
What do you mean? Well, for example, if someone were to put in one penny coin, that wouldn't work, presumably, would it? No, of course not. So, well, how does the meter know that the coin's been fed as, as, a, thrumpity, as a thrumpity bit? Ah, I see what you're getting at now. The meter tells coins marked by their shape and size, which includes their thickness. A thumpity bit is about three quarters of an inch in diameter, you see. Other coins just won't fit. I see. It's clearly been very well thought out. With this minute, her form will test me with that information in case it is, imper it is pertinent. As you wish, my lord. We're back to this. The meter is designed for coins in the exact diameter and thickness of a thrumpity bit. Nothing else will fit. So let me press it then. But conversely then, it would seem that anything matching the three pence coin exactly in terms of diameter and thickness could equally well be used. Would um, that be true? Well, yes, in a way. The weight comes into it to a certain extent as well. We've thought of that, though, anyway. If we find any fake coins in the coin box when I empty the meter, the contract says that the customer has to pay a 100 times the amount that they diddled as a fine. We live for moments like that, us gasmen do live for moments. <laughs> well, it would seem the gas company has thought of everything. Woohoo! Hurrah for gas! Hurrah for cash! All the all the way! That's quite enough of that. Remind me, how big are the thumpity bits? About three quarters of an inch across. What do you think, Mr. Narahato? Is this two centimeters measurement significant? Or perhaps there is some other aspect of the meter's construction that we should be focusing on. Yes, you may be right. Perhaps I should try a different tack here. Like asking about whether the meter can be dismantled, for example. Well, let's delve deeper, I guess. Why not? How can the meter be dismantled? Dismantled? Fart. <laughs> yes, given that there are no signs of it being forced, I'm wondering if perhaps rather than being broken open, it might have been taken apart. Well, yes, that does make some sense. The pan locks are made by a first-class locksmith from the finest quality steel, and the meter box itself is made from a plate steel as well, welded shut to ensure it can't be opened again. I can assure you, it's quite impossible to dismantle it. Woohoo! Yeah, nothing leaks from an Alamontian meter, no coins, no gas, no nothing! I see. Well, the witness admitted her formal testimony with that information in case it's impertinent. As you wish, my lord. Let's see. Let's see. Here. Oh, no. Wait. I have to do this again. Anyone ever tried? Oh, yeah. They've tried. But they've all given up before long. After all, if they actually broke into the meter, the company would be able to take legal action. Yes, that makes sense. What do you think? Is it welded steel construction significant? Or perhaps there's some other... Okay, no, I want the other thing. Okay. Okay, now I need to put this back. I'm pretty sure the welding is not important. Okay, so... Pressing that doesn't do anything but change the dialogue. Okay, so let's see. What do we have? Let's see. I want to examine this. Oh, look at this bar of soap. There's a circular depression on this side about two centimeters across. Or three quarters of an inch. Ah, do you think? We did find the soap at the scene, didn't we? Yes, yes. There's There were two bars on that little ledge just outside the window. So we took this one, but I'm sure that when we first found it, there was some sort of reddish medallion in the middle there. I remember it clearly. Yes, but there's no sign of it now. Where could it have gone? Okay. So it could have melted. There was, there was like a coiny shaped thing in it earlier when I had seen it. What? Oh! <gasps> 
No, I know what it is, dude. What he did is he put, he put, he made it, he cut the, in the shape. That's the coffee on the ground. Okay, so what he did is he put the coffee, the stone cold coffee, into that bar of soap, and then he filled it up at the the, the soap. Uh, he put the he put the uh, the coffee in the soap, and then put the soap outside so that it would freeze. And then. When this, when the, when it froze, he could put then the frozen coin-shaped coffee into the thing. But the hole will let it, when it melts with the gas in there, it'll, it'll just come right back out through the bottom. So it's a fake coin. But will presenting the po the bar of soap be enough? Let's give it a shot. I hope that he Narahata will make the same jump. Let me just confirm something here. If the diameter and thickness were to be correct. The meter would accept any object as if it were a thumpity bit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Well, by something of a coincidence, while we were investigating Mr. Shamspear's room, we found a particular item that matches the dimensions perfectly. Something of the same size as a thumpity bit? What was it? The item in question is this. <laughs> soap! What? Hey, you been inhaling gas as a bar of soap? It certainly looks nothing like a thumpity bit, I must say. It looks like I'm going to have to point it out exactly what I mean here. What's so important about the soap is this part here. You have to turn over the soap to see what I mean. Ah! Are you referring to that round depression in the middle of the soap there? That's right, a depression that's approximately three quarters of an inch in diameter. Or, in other words, almost exactly the same size as a thumpity bit. A, thump a thrump penny bit. I'm saying it wrong. GET AWAY! Does anyone here have, a, have in their possession a, thrump a thrumpity bit? Quickly now, hand over your coins, ladies and gentlemen! It sounds rather like a highway robbery, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks to a kind member of the public in the gallery, we have here a thrumpity bit. Now let's see if it fits. Da -da -da -da. My word, it couldn't be more snug. Yes. <laughs> As I suspected. This, without a doubt, is a vital clue to, ex to explain how the uh, Alamont Gas Company is being defrauded. Well, I don't believe it. But how is this still going to relate to the poison? Over here, freaking... Fire! So, your assertion amounts to what? That some inferior bar of soap has a tentative connection to the theft of gas. Yes. The depression in the soap was clearly made by a thrumpity bit. I must concur at least that pushing a coin with some force into a poor quality bar of soap such as this is a remarkably simple way of replicating the coin's shape. And then you can just use, well, some melted wax or something to pour into the mountain to the mold. You can make fake coins in no time. Dude, her whole dress is a bee! This brings all the pieces of the puzzle together. It's the method Mr. Shamspear has been using to steal the gas. That's the missing link. And now, if I follow the chain of thought, it's going to bring me to a new explanation for what happened that nobody's considered yet. But this is all nonsense! If the man had been making fake coins, my worker there would have found them when he emptied the meter. Quite true, Lady Alamont. In the absence of some black magic that can make them disappear... I think Zeke's already knows what I'm thinking. I see. Is that what we are dealing with? Is that... There is one form of black magic that could cause the fake coins to disappear into a thin air. Yes. Exactly. And the meter here gives it away. What on earth? There are remnants of the magical method used visible on the gas meter taken from the victim's room. If that is your assertion, counsel, the defense will, will identify these remnants for the court at once. Where on the meter can the remnants of the method used to make the Bitcoins disappear be seen? The hole, duh. Why did I have to spell this out for you? We found this bar of soap at the scene of the crime, just outside the victim's window. Outside? Yes, outside, where you or yourself, Mr. Leaderman, Meterman, were loitering in the freezing winter air. That's where we found the soap. Ah, I get it. That's right, the answer, of course. 
is ice. Did you say ice? Thank you, we're thinking the same thing. Mr. Chancellor has been leaving a soap like this outside his window each evening, filled with water. After a night outside in the bitter cold, the water is completely frozen solid the next morning. Zin, he takes his fake coins of ice and feeds them to his gas meter, giving him light and warmth in spades. As his room becomes very comfortably warm, the ice now inside the meter coin box melts, turning back into water and draining harmlessly away through the small hole made in the other side of the meter. That is how, without leaving any evidence of his wrongdoing, this man has been stealing Alamont gas. Okay. I know why you helped me a criminal. Just like that. So simply. Is is he trying to make us look like idiots? He's been fooling us all with some bars of soap and some water? That's right, madam. I don't believe it! It can't be true! Do you have any idea how much money we spent to develop that new meter? And I had the audacity to suggest that a bit of soap and some water can render it totally useless? I'm fairly sure I didn't design it. Evidence. So sorry? I want evidence! If you're going to stand there and tell me our meters are rubbish, I want to see proof! She's very good at enforcing accountability, isn't she? Why is she crying? Sasato, calm down. Well, I have proof. Well, very well, Lady Alamont. If you'd like evidence, I'll provide it. What? Mr. Narahato, are, are, are you saying you do actually have the evidence to support this theory? I did notice a trace of something that bothered me a little bit at the time. Yeah, I sure noticed it, too. And I have a feeling that this theory we've come up with now could explain it. The piece of evidence that substantiates the theory about Mr. Shamsphere has been stealing gas is the crime photo. This is a photograph of the scene of the point of, the point of when the victim was discovered, taken by Inspector Gregson. And it clearly shows the remnants of the crime carried out by Mr. Shamsphere. What remnants? Bro, and it's like, yeah, sure, water could also be that stain, but, I, I mean, come on. when we, Okay, you guys didn't see it, but when I first saw that bar of soap, it had a brown coin-shaped thing in it. And then when we have it tearing around in our pockets, the, the, it's gone. Unless we left it back to... <gasps> but if the other bar of soap has the co frozen coffee in it still back at the crime scene, then that's the, it, that's the, that's the coffee we need to inspect, if that's what it is. You can see here the gas meter on the wall in Mr. Shamsphere's room. Now, look closely at the floorboards directly underneath the meter. What? What is that? Some kind of grubby stain? Almost certainly. It's a water stain resulting from the liquid that drained out of the hole made in the meter. Ah! If one coin gives around two hours of gas usage and the occupant was heating his room in all of his waking hours, you can imagine he would have used around ten of the, his fake coins each day. Melting ice inside the mirror's coin box would have been dripping out almost constantly, leaving a stain on the floor. This, this is awful. And there's further evidence, too. The Shamsir is slumped over at his table, blatantly having consumed strychnine, str whatever that is. And right there next to him is a bar of soap, broken in half. You're right. It would appear to me then, Council, that the man was eating the soap. Was he? Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going back to the eating the soap again. Pardon me for disagreeing with your lordship, but... Certainly not. He didn't beat around the bush uh. there, did he? <laughs> in truth, Mr. Jansen was found with a fork in his hand. A meal of soap is sounding is increasingly lightly, Lord Vincy. Do you mean to say he was using that fork to... Yes. To extract a frozen coin from the bar of soap. Ah! But the bar's broken half. So perhaps it didn't go very well. Well, good gracious! Yay! <laughs> He's like, I'm done with this. <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks, he's like, what is this freaking kangaroo court? I was throwing my hand up in despair. It happened to catch my hallowed bottle on the way. Pray forgive my melodrot mistake. What is the meaning of this council? Allow me to pose my learned friend a question. 
What exactly did you establish with your most recent cross-examination? Act exactly! Absolutely bubkits! <laughs> um, well... That Mr. William Shamspear is a liar and a thief. In other words, his testimony is unreliable. That's it. That's exactly it. Exactly. Thank you. Very well. Let us assume the man is a liar. Now, allow me to pose another question. What possible difference does that make? Well, we should have thought about it. We know that suicide can be discontinued. Scotland Yard's investigation revealed no sign of it as another vessel that contains poison. And on the night in question, there were no visitors to the room except the accused. We're back to scare of one. Wait, hold on. I accidentally, uh, what did he say? Oh, no, that. No, on the night in question, there were no visitors to the room except the accused. The young Gaspin's testimony, which we have no reason to doubt, has confirmed that. Furthermore, the only possible way the poison could have entered the victim's body is via that settee. The court has seen no evidence whatsoever that suggests otherwise. Even if William Shamspear is the liar you claim him to be, these facts have been objectively established. There's no escaping it. Oh. Therefore, in light of these facts, the prosecution calls for immediate agitation. I can't say words. You... No, come on. What? Please, let's bring up the coffee coin. Hold on, I'll check something. Order, order! Well, cancel. How does the defense respond? I want to look at my picture again, real quick. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's a shadow or if that's coffee in the dish. I can't tell. It's probably it. Mr. Narahado? What was the point of that last cross examination? Did it actually get us anywhere? Or did it make no difference at all, like Lord Venzinks is saying? Raise an objection. Bruh. No, this isn't over. The defense will not rest. <laughs> what? But cancel, you've successfully explained everything. You've identified and substantiated the unscrupulous method employed by the Mr. Shamskier to consume gas. What more is there to discuss? Lord Van Zeeks just highlighted three facts in order to make his point. But contrary to what he would have the court believe, not all of them have been objectively established at all. What are you trying to say, my Nipponese friend? At least one of those so-called facts is an assumption made due to a lack of evidence. But the situation has changed now, following the cross-examination of the latest witness to take the stand. Don't be absurd. What is this nonsense? Yes, when you bring everything we've learned so far together and consider as a whole, it's clear. There is a question that we now need to reconsider. Namely... Oh, frick. Well, was the poison in the tea? I'm, I'm going to save, but I'm pretty positive. If we're going to the thought process I'm thinking of, that's the, that's the point we need to make. We've all been led to believe that the strining poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear was in the tea brought to him by Mr. Nasume. But that's conjecture at best. The victim has testified that nothing else passed his lips that night. There is no other possibility. And since there was no trace of the tea left as the teen, it couldn't be tested for traces of the poison. As I said, the situation has changed. Because in fact, some of Mr. Sumi's tea WAS left at the scene. And a particular piece of evidence proves it. Objection. The ludicrous claims Scott and Yard detectives investigated the scene exhaustively. What evidence are you suggesting they missed? The defense has made a bold claim indeed. Very well, counsel. Present your proof. What evidence from the scene of the crime can tell us about the nature of the defendant's tea? Is this so? Good gracious! You say that all the time. The soap again, the same bar the victim used to fashion like his coins of ice? Yes, that's right, my lord. It's just come back to me. Something about when we first found this bar of soap at the scene yesterday. It's more bars of soap. Soap? What are the bars of soap doing lined up on the edge of the outside of the window? Yeah, that's where we found them. 
I'm quite certain that when we originally stumbled upon the bars of soap, there was actually a frozen coin in each bar. So you discovered the gas thief's coin factory. Fascinating! In a way, yes. But there's more. The coins were found in the soap at the time weren't normal ice. There, there was something strange about them, you mean? Exactly. Something very obviously strange. They were red. The ice was red. No, you mean? That's right, it's obvious to me now. The fake coins in the soap were made from frozen tea. I kept saying coffee. I was dumb. Whoops. What? I don't know who said it, but I'm just gonna... I would remind the court of the statement made by Mr. Natsumi earlier in this trial. That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shemspear's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I brought bottled water, especially to make it. This is the result! Never will I touch you again! Never! Ah, yes, I believe there had been a snowfall that day. It was particularly cold. Sadly, on such occasions, the poorly constructed water means these to enter prone to freezing. Which is why he used the cop that used the tea to make his coins, because he didn't have any water to freeze on his own. That's why he used... I was, my brain was also thinking, why, why would he use the tea if he just had water? I forgot the throwaway line that the water lanes were frozen. And that he Natsume used bottled water for the tea. I completely forgot that part, point. It didn't change my thought, but it, it does explain it more. So on the night in question, Mr. Shamspear, having no running water to use, was forced to use the tea brought by Mr. Natsume in order to make his fake coins. My word! There were two bars of soap on the window ledge when my judicial assistant and I investigated the scene. That's right, and we only borrowed one of them. Which means that even as we speak, some of this defendant's tea is still present at the scene of the crime, frozen solid in a bar of soap outside Mr. Shamspear's window. Extraordinary! Earlier today, Inspector Gregson informed the court. That even if one drop of the tea remains, Scotland Yard will be able to analyze it for the poison. As such, we are now in a position to prove or disprove what has been, until now, mere conjecture. By finding out for sure whether or not Mr. Nesumi's tea actually contained cr the poison at all. Ugh! You smug Nipponese! My lord, we cannot do the defendant in the, the injustice of passing judgment now. The police should be dispatched to recover the remaining bar of soap from the scene at once, and the defense requests a thorough anal analysis of the frozen tea embedded in it to determine whether or not it contains any poison. That seems like a very fair thing to ask. Bailiff! Bailiff! Instruct the police to attend the scene at once! Yes, my lord, understood! Looks distressed. It would seem we have no choice but to suspend these proceedings for the time being. I trust you have no objection, Lord Van Zeeks? None, my lord. Skull and Yard will recover the tea from the scene and carry out the requ requisite tests immediately. The trial will resume at the same hour tomorrow. Alrighty. The prosecution and the defense may conduct further investigations as appropriate in the interim. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Well, we managed to scrape through there somehow. Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned until tomorrow. See, now the question is, do I do the next investigation term before we stop for today, or do I just stop here? That's the question. It just hit midnight for myself, so. I will not be doing the second part of the trial today, but I could do the investigation. So, what is what is the opinion of, of the active chat? Should we try to finish the second day of investigation first? Or should we just move, move uh, stop for today? The first stage of investigation took about um, uh, almost two hours. 
of the first half, it could get more complicated. So it might be safer to stop here. I don't know how long day two of investigation will go. So perhaps maybe today this is a good spot to stop for today since it is a literal natural stopping point. I thought we'd go a little bit further in the trial, so I was planning to stop sooner, but it might be safer to stop now. <laughs> but... Depending on the response, I could maybe go a little longer, but I wouldn't want to stop in the middle of investigation period. <laughs> I get two very different responses to that. And I have to continue the investigation next week. Because if the next uh, exam, if the next outside of courtroom se section takes two hours, and the next courtroom section takes two hours or something, uh, you know we're gonna need more time for it. But I don't know. I'm kind. I'm just. I'm torn of whether or not to stop here for the night or to keep going. But like, what was that? I don't know. Maybe this is a good. Maybe I probably should stay. It's like, ugh, it's like I want to keep playing, but it's like I also don't want to keep playing into the late hours and everyone leaves. <laughs> and then I actually have to keep doing the rest by myself. I don't know. It, maybe we should definitely stop here. I, It's a little earlier than I expected, and my research thought I would have a little longer. So perhaps it's just a smart play to do that. But, uh, so let's see. What's today... What are we doing? Um, okay, so it's now Tuesday, obviously. Um, all right. Um, well, obviously the next stream will be more uh, Gale of Darkness uh, on Friday. Um, we'll be back here again next Monday with the, the next section of this case. And... Uh, I don't know. I kind of want to try and do a nighttime stream, an after work stream of one of our farming games. Maybe a Wonderful Life remake or maybe Harvestella. I wanted to try those things too. Also, what people are here, um, perhaps not this coming Friday, but maybe the next Friday or something. Maybe we should plan that to be our our movie night stream or something, depending on on how my works my workflow goes for next week. Uh, I can probably try and get some more information about that soon and see. Maybe I can try and get some days next week that I don't get out of work at 10 o'clock and can actually start stream maybe by 10, which is still a little later than I would like, but I'm thinking of maybe of, of doing maybe all of our Christmas movies in one stream, just doing a couple movies, maybe two at most, maybe three. I'm not sure, because movies can, get up to be, can be adding up a little bit of time. And I would do some kind of some kind of thing. True. And then it's like I gotta I gotta figure out what kind of multiplayer streams people can do. Uh, so maybe I'll do a straw poll for that to see what kind of games, not that people want to play, but games that you can play and, and join in on. And then maybe we can do one multiplayer stream sometime uh, before the month is over, maybe before Christmas or something. So we'll see. Uh, I just, I, sometimes it's easier for me to get these ideas and talk them out while people are here so I can get some feedback of what can and can't work uh, but uh, that's the thing so let me see I can hopefully try and arrange some more time for next week maybe because I got cut hours this week so I don't even go in until 6pm tomorrow and get this work for 4 hours so unless maybe I do unless maybe I do like a daytime stream and continue this tape this this case in the daytime. I don't know how daytime streams work for people as much as everyone else. If I have a lot of time, I just need to actually get up for it. So you can let me know of that too, and uh, in the uh, in the Discord or something, and we can see what we can do from there. But we're gonna stop here for tonight. I'll I'll stick to my guts. It's like whenever I wouldn't stick to my gut in the first in the first game of this, that we ended up going for like six hours, and I don't want to do that today. So. Um, we will, we will end here. What the heck happened to our office? Why is our office? You know what? That's a great note to end on. <laughs>
Where? Like, where's my office? We'll find out next time, maybe. Freaking, I don't even know what happened to the two. Freaking. What the frick? <laughs> What a, I, I, I was gonna see a little bit and give us a little bit of a cliffhanger, but that that initial knee jerk reaction feels perfect. So yeah, have a good night, guys. I'll be back uh, for sure Friday with some more Pokemon XD. I know maybe it's Pokemon's not everyone's cup of tea, but I've really been having a lot of fun playing it and whatnot. It's been a blast for me. Everything disappeared. You sent our stuff away. <laughs> All right. So yeah, and anything if you're if you're still wanting to to uh, watch something before you know the night's over, if you're interested, you could still just rewatch the first half of the stream that everyone missed. That's always an option too. <laughs> I'll plug my own stuff right now. But uh, have a good one. I will see you guys in the next stream. Good night, everybody, and have a good one.